Oh my god, this is so much fun. I feel like I haven't been live in like a lifetime. So this is almost weird. It's like, oh my god, I've forgotten how to go live. Insane. Oh, shout out to Understitch. You have an appointment in 15 minutes. Oh, an appointment. At this time of the night. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, so how's everyone doing? Just making sure I'm actually live and everything's a-okay before I start talking. <laughs> A very important appointment. Well, congrats to you, whatever it is. Um, I was just looking at the time like, damn, an appointment at this time? That's insane. It's definitely not with anyone UK-based. Certainly not. What happened with my other channel? Um, what channel are you talking about? I've made so many channels like on and off. So <laughs> sometimes I forget. Oh, Emma B and Blanks. Welcome to the to the show, to the live show. And maybe you want to change the name. Yeah, a lot of people don't actually, it's so funny, a lot of people don't realise that my channel is the Fashion Archive. Like, some people think that the Fashion Archive disappeared and, like, this is a new channel. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's kind of strange because I did, like, a whole announcement. But when I launched my magazine was when I realised um, getting information out to a lot of people is, like, damn near impossible because um, when I had my magazine, at the end of every single video, I was saying, okay, my magazine's coming out on so-and-so date. My magazine's coming out so-and-so date. And then I remember, um, like, it sold out quickly, luckily. And then I did a live stream after, just, like, saying thank you. And so many people in the live stream didn't even know I had a fashion magazine. And I was like, I literally put it at the end of every video. So I don't know what else to do at that point. Oh, the perfume channel. So for people that don't know, I'm really into fragrances. Like I'm obsessed. And I made like a fragrance channel, but it didn't last long because I called out um, a lot of <laughs> established fragrance YouTubers and it didn't go down too well with them. So they had my channel taken down. I uh, hope you're going well, man. Keep making this beautiful work you're making. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Oh, I love that it's only 30 people here. It reminds me of um, the time when I used to do live streams and it was just like a really small group and like I would do live streams every week and it was the same exact people. It was like a whole inside the group. It's really cool. He said they smoked your perfume channel. <laughs> yeah, they, I guess you can say that. They smoked it. I said those are the vibes. Those are literally the vibes. Those were literally the vibes. Like for people that are new, because of course there'll be a lot of people that are new to this channel, but um, we used to, especially during the lockdown, I was live streaming a lot. Like I almost like damn near had a live show. And there were even times when I would live stream for 
that we we did an eight hour live stream. We did twelve hours. There was one time we almost went twenty four hours, which was insane. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna get into Alessandro soon, like really soon actually. I'm just uh, introducing the audience to what's about to go on. So I'm really just talking about fashion news. I'm not sure if I want to make this like a regular thing. I think maybe I will. Um, we'll see how it goes today. Um, oh, have fun with whatever meeting you're going to. I hope it goes well. But yeah, so basically we're really just talking about Raph Simmons and Alessandro Michele and basically just speculating where we think um, they're going to end up or what their next steps are because of what has happened. So for people that don't know what the news is, um, Raf Simmons closed his eponymous label after 27 years of the brand running. And then also um, Alessandro Michele just announced, well, for me, because I'm in the UK yesterday, technically, that he is parting ways with Gucci. Um, there's new designs coming down like Paolo Carzano, Miles, George Daniels. I don't know who any of those are. Let me have a quick Google, actually. It's quite fascinating. Paolo Carzano. Where's Paolo from? Stuff looks really interesting. I'm going to check that out after this live stream. That's cool. Um, are you going to upload the full stream on the channel? I have to go and I'm very interested in your opinion. Yes, I will be uploading it. Of course, YouTube is like kind of weird now where like everything is in a different tab. So you just have to go to like the live tab after the live stream and you'll find it. But anyway, let me um let's let's get into the nitty gritty. I'm gonna put Alessandro Michele's debut collection, and we're just gonna have a discussion about just Alessandro Michele's work and all that sort of stuff, all that good stuff. Um, let's see. Yo, Costa, what's up? What's up? How are you? So, Alessandro is my uncle and I've been following you for a few years. I'd love to set up an interview with you. That's <laughs> insane if Alessandro is actually your uncle. That's wild. That must be so fucking cool. That is insane. Um, I'd love to interview Alessandro. And I'd love to interview you um, if he is your uncle. Sometimes I don't actually know if I'm like being pranked or not with things like that. <laughs> um, okay, let's get into the Alessandro stuff. So, okay, cool. So I don't know how many people know like the whole story of Alessandro Michele and Gucci. So I'm just gonna kind of give a brief background and then talk about this collection that's on the screen, which is his first collection of Gucci. Um, and this was before he was officially um, announced as the creative director. So Alessandro Michele was initially an accessories designer he worked at Fendi. He was hired by Tom Ford in 2002 to be an accessories designer under Tom Ford, in which he helped design a lot of Tom Ford hits, especially when it comes to like the bags and stuff. Of course, Tom Ford left. He stayed, um, Alessandro Michele stayed at the brand and he was, he continued to be an accessories designer and sort of worked his way up. And he worked under Frida Giannini as well. But when it came to Frida Giannini, there was like a bit of contention between them. So he didn't really personally like Frida Giannini. 
Neither did he like uh, Frida Giannini's work. But when you read um, interviews of Alessandro Michele, essentially um, the case with Alessandro Michele was that he was just doing a job and he was just doing his job and therefore whatever Frida told him to do, he would do. But he almost quit um, working at Gucci because he just didn't like the fact that he didn't have any creative input. He was just kind of being told what to do and then doing it. And he just felt like his creativity was like dying. So he took a role as a creative director of a porcelain brand. I can't remember the name because this is all off the top of my head. Um, so I can't remember the name of what the porcelain brand was, but that sort of reignited his creativity. And then before he knew it, Frida Giannini, and of course the CEO of Gucci at the time, he was also Frida, Frida Giannini's partner, were unceremoniously fired. And they, they they needed to create a collection for a runway show that was literally about to happen. And so they decided that they would let Alessandro Michele design it. And by then, because Alessandro Michele had been thinking for years, oh, if I could design Gucci, this is how I would do it. This would be my vision. So he kind of had a really, really cool and good vision to like go into immediately. And so I think the rumor is, I don't know if this is like, Someone said Richard Gnori. There we go. Thank you. Um, so that's the name of the porcelain brand. But anyway, the rumor is that Alessandro Michele designed the collection in five days. So this collection that you're looking at on the screen. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not. Some people have said two weeks. All I know is that he had a short span of time because when Frida Giannini was fired, there was literally so little time before the runway show was like set to actually happen. And so this show was really interesting. What makes it interesting is when you think of Tom Ford's aesthetic, Tom Ford was all about sex and sexiness. It was this like sexy, jet set, chic. The type of people, the customer base of Tom Ford's Gucci were people that own private jets and, you know, are flying to Bora Bora for a weekend getaway that it was like this very jet set lifestyle and it came with a lifestyle even the ad campaigns are very akin to that sort of lifestyle and also the sex was being sold that way like tom ford had some like iconic ads whether it's like the g pubes um things like that and when you think of alessandro michele it was completely different to that alessandro michele's look was androgynous alessandro alessandro michele's look you had men in pussy bow blouses. You had models that you can't even tell what their gender is. Like you really cannot tell because of the styling and the way they look. And you had, you know, women's collections where there were a lot of men on the runway and men's collections where there were a lot of women on the runway and everything was being blurred. And also just this very bohemian sort of chic aesthetic. So it was like completely different. And of course, this collection, which was the debut collection, but not unofficially though, it was so polarizing. And a lot of people didn't take to it because it was so different to what people expected from Gucci, which was the Tom Ford aesthetic. And at that point in time, especially, it was Frida Giannini's aesthetic, which was kind of a continuation of what Tom Ford was doing, but less sexy and more like, I'd say chic. I think really Giannini was almost like designing for an even older clientele than Tom Ford's Gucci. And so it was completely different. People were almost, the criticism was almost like, this isn't Gucci, uh, which is hilarious, because what exactly is Gucci? Um, especially when it comes to clothing. There's no exact history. If you go back to, you know, the likes of Gucci or Gucci and Paolo and Aldo, they are known for, you know, the... Leather goods, the luggage, the bags, the G logos, like the pattern, the print. So when it comes to ready to wear, there is no like, oh, this is how Gucci should look. There's no way that Gucci should look, um, which is quite funny. That's the same criticism I had for people that, uh, you know, criticize people like Eddie Simon because he changed how Celine should look, even though what does Celine look like? There have been so many designers at Celine with completely different aesthetics. 
Did someone say Tom Ford equals Alton Mason? That's an interesting take. Very, very interesting take. And so, yeah, anyway, going back to Alessandro, the Alessandro talk, I think that, well, I hope that Alessandro Michele's, um, you know, legacy will be remembered because something I really love about the story of Alessandro Michele is fashion now, when you think of, like, the big creative directors at the big brands, brands don't like to take risks anymore. They want to have a big, like, well-known name at the helm and so someone like Alessandro Michele who wasn't that known at the time because he was like more internal within Gucci um you know those kind of things you just don't see it in fashion anymore it's such a refreshing story that someone that had worked his way up in Gucci for years got a chance to be the creative director because think about it Alessandro has been there since Tom Ford's days. So he understood all the different aspects of Gucci. He's literally seen all the different creative directors at Gucci from, you know, the Tom Ford time, which is really when this big ready-to-wear collection started anyway. So he was, like, the perfect person to hire, but that doesn't happen. Like, look at now where the big discussion is who is going to be the replacement for you know, Virgil Abloh at Louis Vuitton, there's not even a single mention of someone, I don't know, who has been working at LV within the ranks and someone that has worked there for years and years because it's LV. They're looking for a big ticket, hot ticket designer. And so that's something I find so refreshing because even when you look at the um, the financials, Alessandro Michele for the first five quarters, like from when he was appointed the creative director of Gucci, the sales rose by 35%, a whole 35%. And it just shows you that you don't necessarily need, you know, a hot ticket, big, massive name designer. What you really need is just a good narrative, a good story, and a designer that really actually understands the aesthetic of the brand. <laughs> Alessandro reminds me of Vivian Westwood's boyfriend. Are you talking about her boyfriend now? Or are you talking about, um, like, Malcolm McLaren? Um, yeah, who are you talking about? What's her boyfriend's name again? Andrea something. Andreas, Andreas, Andreas. Kronthler or something like that? But I don't know who you're talking about. Are you talking about um, Michael McLaren? Oh, her boy now. Okay, okay. Really? What reminds you um, of Vivian Westwood's boyfriend? Is it like their aesthetic? Or like how they look? I guess they have like the full beard thing going on. Yeah, 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 I know he's a designer. He actually designed for Vivian Westwood, funny enough. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about um, Alessandro leaving Gucci? I mean, a lot of people have speculated things that are going to happen because, of course, something that I guess we can talk about now is the fact that Ras Simmons closed his house and people are saying that apparently Ras Simmons might actually move to Gucci, which I don't think will happen. I think he's going to stay at Prado, but that's one rumour I've been hearing lately. I don't know what's already been said, but Alessandro leaving was overdue for honest, although I'm surprised because I thought he was making the money. Um, I looked at the financials and they don't look bad. He actually left on a high. Like, the assumption is that Alessandro Michele wasn't selling, but when you actually look at the financials, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, obviously, it was down because of COVID, but it was slowly rising back up. So, what from what I heard anyway, was that um, Gucci essentially wanted Alessandro to change the aesthetic of Gucci. And I think the reason for that is they want to grow faster and they want to 
become like a massive, massive brand on the level of like an LV or a Chanel. And they don't feel like Alessandro Michele's aesthetic and the vision for the brand is mass appealing enough, which is fair enough. Because the um, androgynous aesthetic, I personally love it. I can see why it doesn't appeal to like the masses. And I think Alessandro Michele, because I've read enough interviews to know that, not like I know how he thinks or I know him personally, I've, ne I've never met him, but in terms of the way he speaks about his creative process, it seems as though he wouldn't want to change his aesthetic and he wouldn't want to make his thing mass appealing because that was why he almost quit Gucci in the first place. It was like, he felt like his creativity was being stifled. So I feel like if they came to him like, oh, we need you to change your aesthetic, I just don't think he would be okay with that, which is like, I can definitely respect that. Yeah, they are planning to have a final show. Yeah. I personally love it too, but it's not a style everyone can pull off. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Any problem they have now is replacing Alessandro, in my opinion. I think it's easier said than done because Gucci wants to make pounds, and that's not easy without fresh ideas. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, hiring, especially now, hiring a designer is um, is stress. It's so much. Like, for example, the Louis Vuitton menswear designer that's going to come after Virgil Abloh, that has been a topic that's in such huge contention. I don't know if people want me to talk about that, but, like, there's so much stuff that has been going on behind the scenes in terms of that. There's a whole new slew of fashion designers who are winning. Phoebe Philo. Um... If you want to know the real story about the Phoebe Philo thing, then DM me. But it's definitely not something I'm going to say on the live stream. I'm certainly not going to say that. Michael, why don't you why don't you hop in the live? Share your opinions. You're up late though. It's almost two a.m. in London. So, what are you doing at this time, bro? It's confusing to me because it seems that Michele would be the one one of the best fits for Gucci considering his history. Maybe they'll have to find another big name and switch it up. It's tough. Yeah, but so the, the issue with... Because um, the thing about Alessandro Michele is, once again, I feel like he has a connection to every single aspect of Gucci from Tom Ford's time because he worked for Tom Ford and he's been there since. And so, therefore... Whoever comes after Alessandro is going to be so far removed from the history of Gucci because they probably wouldn't have been there under Tom Ford or Frida or Alessandro himself. So, yeah, they're quite far removed compared to someone like Alessandro who really, really understood what Gucci was because he had been there for so long. People have to look beyond these dated labels and houses where they design clothes from now. <laughs> is Gucci in the higher bracket for caring? Yes, it is. It is. Uh, I don't mean next time you plan to go live and I'll hop on. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, bro. Whoever comes after it's going to be like performing after. Yeah, I was just on the live stream um, on Instagram and this is a really good point. So most times, things have to go down to come up. So if you look at Balenciaga, for example, um, financially speaking, not necessarily like my personal opinion, but Nicolas Gasquier at Balenciaga did really well because he sold a lot of bags. Then Alexander Wang, well, controversial name, but Alexander Wang came after, didn't do so well financially. And then Demna came after and is doing really well financially. And so, yeah, things normally go like this in fashion. So there's always, especially after a really good tenure, like Alessandro's one, that it might be a case where someone comes in and doesn't really have a good spell, like, at all, <laughs> which is quite sad. And then after that happens, then the designer after that then doesn't have the pressure because the person before them wasn't, like, fantastic and had been there for forever. 
Tom to say Kanye will be Gucci's new designer. I heavily doubt that. No, I heard that um, Nicholas's contract at LV has been renewed. But Nicholas is the women's wear designer, though. He's not in charge of men's wear, so that's completely unrelated to what I was talking about. Because, obviously, I'm talking about LV is looking for a designer for their menswear line, like artistic director for menswear at Louis Vuitton. And Tiago clothes aren't great right now, besides awful Pia. <laughs> oh my, that's hilarious. Uh, not meaning to sidetrack, so a lot of people have asked me to talk about the Balenciaga controversy. Um, as it stands, there is so much more information coming that I don't necessarily want to jump the gun and have an opinion on it yet. Because the worst thing, like it's a very um, sensitive subject, like anything with kids. And I don't want to like jump the gun and then say like something that isn't accurate about something that touchy. So I'm just going to refrain from really addressing the Balenciaga controversy for now, at least. Yeah, the next person could possibly be used to act as a scapegoat for the next person to elevate. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, when it comes to the LV stuff, though, um, people have been talking. Um, I have multiple and multiple sources on what's going on at Louis Vuitton. Um, but to give you guys the insider... Uh, Scoop, how many people in this live stream? 65. So 65 you get the inside scoop. So I have heard from multiple sources that are quite close within like the LV camp about all the people that are being that people are speculating um will replace Virgil Abloh at LV. So the first name is Martin Rose, which is the name that everyone was like, yeah, we want Martin Rose to be at LV. I want to see Martin Rose at LV. But from what I've heard, Martin Rose has pitched multiple collections at Louis Vuitton and they didn't like it. And what Louis Vuitton is looking for, they're looking for a designer who's going to come in and pitch like an idea of what uh, Louis Vuitton is going to look like, not someone to pitch like collections, if that makes sense. So Martin Rose is sort of like up in the air, like if Martin Rose is going to be the designer. I don't, I know that Grace Wells Bonner interviewed, but I don't know how that went. Then after that, they went to Sharaf from Casablanca. Sharaf from Casablanca then became the leading candidate for it, but then he turned it down, which makes a lot of sense because Casablanca is doing really well financially now. And it sells a lot. So why do you want to, like, jeopardize that for a brand where he could get fired, like, if things don't go well? So I think that was a smart move for him. Um, I haven't heard about Samuel Ross. I don't know if they've approached him or not. Um, and then someone said, someone said the ERL, I think it was Panboy, for you guys that know, like, Pierre. A lot of people said that ERL has been put forward for it, which I think is a bit early. It's a bit early for him to have a LV role, but I, it makes sense. He's part of the LVMH sort of group. He won the Karl Lagerfeld Award at the latest LVMH prize. He had a collaboration with Dior, had a whole collection with Dior. So it makes a lot of sense. A lot of people have said Telfar. From my knowledge, Telfar has not even been considered for the role at all. Like he hasn't interviewed for the LV menswear role. So that was not, like, it's just, he hasn't interviewed for them. Uh, someone said it could be a step up for Grace. I mean, I love Grace's work, personally. Um, at the start, I didn't, but her work has really grown on me. Her work has definitely really grown on me. Someone said they're looking for another Virgil. I wouldn't say they're looking for another Virgil in terms of like someone who has the same aesthetic. They're just looking for someone to build the community because they've seen that that sort of works.
Yeah, Eli Russell, minutes. he's not ready in my opinion. Yeah, I just think it's a bit early. But I can understand why they would consider him. Because remember, LV said that they were supposed to announce this designer a long time ago at this point. But it's because of like what I just mentioned. They're genuinely just going from designer to designer to designer. And like it's either they don't like the person, what the person is presenting, or in the case of like a sharaf, he like turned it down. So it's quite interesting. And it's so funny because I knew like a lot of this information. The only reason why I'm even talking about it now in the live stream is because it's kind of gone out. Otherwise, I wouldn't mention it. But a lot of people made videos about like who they think is going to replace uh, Virgil Abloh. And like no one said Sharaf from Casablanca, which is hilarious because he was actually one of the leading candidates until he turned it down. And when I say he turned it down, he could change his mind and accept it. So who knows? He might he might end up taking the role. Who knows? But as it stands, they're like desperately looking for a designer for the menswear. Do you think they'll show a collection in Jen then LV? I mean, I suspect maybe the design team have prepped a small collection. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be what it has been, just like the design team for now, just designing stuff till they find a designer. But I just really want it to be Martin Rose or Grace Wells Bonner. I just, yeah. Especially Martin Rose. I love Grace, but I just want it to be Martin Rose. But from what I'm hearing, like, she's not presenting what they're looking for, which is quite saddening, to be honest. <laughs> it could be another possible scapegoat situation if they can't find anyone. Yeah, that could potentially happen, actually. It could. <laughs> Martine Rose socks are fab. I've never owned any of her socks. <laughs> That's funny. But um, going to the... Let me talk about... Because I've got a Raph Simmons collection on the screen. Let me talk about the Raph sort of speculations right now, actually. So what people are speculating about Raph Simmons is that... I've heard in the grapevine... This is not as... Um, concrete as my sources for LV. So take this with a grain of salt. This is more like allegedly. Um, but allegedly, I heard that Mucha Prada is growing a bit tired of designing and she's looking to like slow down and eventually retire. And so, of course, Russ Simmons has closed down his eponymous label, which means he can focus 100% on Prada. So what the biggest rumour is, is that he's going to completely take over Prada when Mucha decides to eventually um, stop. And that was actually initially the reason why she wanted to be a co-creative designer. So she could work alongside Raf and he could understand her design process. So eventually when she retires, it's a case of just, okay, he knows how I think and he can sort of continue this brand and I'm like happy. It's similar to, um, you know, like Ardu Milimista when she kind of started to like co-design with Sebastian Munier when Sebastian Munier was the head of the menswear collections and she was still designing women's wear till she quit and then he took control of everything. It's kind of similar. Yeah, people are saying Mumi. So it's interesting though. It's so interesting to see where all this stuff is going. Someone said Belgian design is real. I definitely agree. I think Belgium uh, has produced some sensational designers like literally sensational where are um i'm guessing that pieter media and uh what's his name at um how did how have i just gone blank completely blank the creative director of bottega i'm guessing that they're belgian because they worked under raf simmons um, I just always assumed they're Belgium. I've never actually looked it up. <laughs> Math Matthew Blazy, there we go. I just thought of him now. I don't know how I went blank with that. Um, but anyway, I'm guessing that they're Belgian because they're doing amazing stuff right now. Um, have I been to Antwerp? I have a whole Antwerp vlog on my channel, actually. I love Antwerp. Antwerp's amazing. 
Um, when I went to Antwerp was when I interviewed uh, Walter van Berendonk. And I also interviewed so many other people too um, that are like well known in the Belgian fashion scene. Yeah, I, I love Belgians, man. I, um, if you know Willy from Vedic Mark 6, I love Willy as well. Willy is really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm very familiar with Antwerp. Uh, my lunch break is about to be over. It's fun getting to be a part of this conversation. I look forward to watching it in its entirety once it's uploaded. Thank you very much for tuning in. That's what everyone has seen from the start of his appointment at Prada. It's just crazy that she could actually start to back away from fashion. I'm going to miss her touch. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think the thing about Raf Simmons is that his aesthetic is so distinctive that even, remember from the start, like the first collection, that they did together, you could so clearly see the like Sterling Ruby graphics and like the just Ras Simmons aesthetic. You could see like which ones were like the Mucha Prada stuff and then you could see what stuff was like the Ras Simmons stuff. And that's, I think, what people are scared of. People are like, if Mucha Prada retires eventually and leaves it all to Raf, will Prada just become like, Raf's aesthetic, or will he like lose the ugly chic? I'm personally very glad he shut down. Sad from a cultural point, obviously, but I personally don't think his recent collections have enhanced or pushed forward his legacy for a whole. Yeah, I could agree with that. Um, but it's it's hard once again, like. Sometimes, especially in situations like this, I don't really want to be too hard on designers because my word, like designing your own brand, running your whole business and then being a creative director of a massive brand like Prada, I don't know how people do it. Like Kim Jones at Fendi and Dior menswear or someone like J.W. Anderson designing his eponymous label and also being at Loewe, like I don't even know why people do all of that. I don't know how they do it. Like when Virgil Abloh was at Off-White and uh, Louis Vuitton and also doing a million collaborations in the meantime with like Nike and Ikea and Mercedes. I'm just like, you guys are insane. I would be like, <laughs> I would be so exhausted if I did stuff like that. <laughs> I personally just want to see more pirate core. I missed the pirate call from Sebastian Munier's um, Auntie Villamista, but you know, it is what it is. Designers now don't get time off. It's insane to me how their creative output can emit in such a brief time. Yeah, I, th I wish fashion would be slower. I think the best fashion comes from designers having a lot of time to think. Like when I think of designers that I really love, um, whether I'm talking about like a uh, I don't know, who are we talking about? Uh, Marta Magella or someone like, um, I always go back to the Belgian designers, but they're actually really good, like Andre Um They, because they didn't produce like damn near 10 collections a year, you can tell, or even Dries Van Noten, for example, you can tell that they've put a lot of thought into what they're actually putting out into the world. Whereas a lot of the time, like, especially with these, like, capsule collections and these weird sort of resort collections, you can tell that it's just, here's some stuff, here's some of our stuff with the logo and some really commercial silhouettes that all of you will buy because of the name. Here you go. That's just how it comes across. Let's put this on the screen. Continue with the... Rough kinetic youth. I love this collection. Um, Carl Oakford was in Senna, argues the only designer who's ever done it at that level. Yeah, Carl was at Fendi and Chanel. That is the most insane thing ever. And Carl was at Chloe um, earlier, before, of course, he did that. We let musicians take a break and breathe. And honestly, do we need this many collections? Genuinely, we don't. Unfortunately, it's that conglomerates are just so supremely capitalistic that they need to make a billion dollars. 
like they just need to make billions and be billion dollar brands which is just so excessive like they like they don't need to make billions like they don't need no one needs billions like you don't but that's the nature of the game uh john galliano is one of the best designers ever born uh I definitely think he's a very good designer. One of the best designers ever born. Holy smokes. <laughs> that's a that's a big take. Carded films as well. I think that's full creative process. Yeah. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love reading about Karl Lagerfeld. I just reread um The Beautiful Four recently. And just, you know, like the contention between Yves Saint Laurent and Karl Lagerfeld is just so funny to like read again. Obviously, I've read the book before, but just reading it again and just the fact that they were actually friends and then like jealousy just started to kick in and kick in and kick in. And then eventually, you know, because Yves Saint Laurent got to like work at Dior and like Karl Lagerfeld sort of had to, he didn't have, I don't want to say he didn't have it easy. Like, sorry, I don't want to say Yves Saint Laurent had it easier. But things things happened for Issa Laurent a lot faster than it did for Carl. So like Issa Laurent was like working for Christian Dior and like Carl was just not getting those kind of looks. Uh, what's your opinion on the future of Vogue? Do you think Edward should move to US Vogue or stay at British Vogue and, and then pass it to someone else? Oh, that's a good question. Um, to be very honest, I think that Edward Enningfor has exception that he's done some exceptional stuff. I know I, I like it's a cliche, like I always say that Vogue is like really shit um, because it is. However, it depends what Vogue we're talking about. So, British Vogue genuinely under Alexander Shulman was horrid. Ever since Edward Enningfor has come in, it's actually really, really good. Um, and when I say really, really good, not necessarily the writing, because I don't think anyone reads Vogue for the words in it. Um, although Vogue has like some good online content, but in terms of text in print, I'm just talking about like the editorials, the shoots, the covers. They've been really good since Edward has taken over. And I just, just want his imprint to be in like British Vogue. Of course, now he, Edward, as far as I know, he oversees like, Vogue in like France and Italy and like basically all the Vogues in Europe. So he has a massive role anyway. If he's going to take over US Vogue, then he might as well just, at that point, he's in charge of Vogue Worldwide. But Anna is just the person that like, I don't think she's ever going to be replaced. Anna, bear in mind, Anna has been at Vogue since before I was born. She's not going anywhere. Like, she's literally not going anywhere. That woman, like, is, she is Condé Nast at this point. <laughs> Katie Grand over Anna. What is Katie Grand doing right now? Because she did, like, The Perfect magazine, but I haven't heard a lot um, about The Perfect magazine. Uh, I don't think Anna is going anywhere. I totally agree. Are there any emerging designers I've noticed? Um, I mean, I was recently in South Africa. I can tell you about the South African fashion designers I noticed there. Yeah, Yaku, Yaku Stapleton. I mean, to be very honest, so before I went to CSM, I was very in touch with like new and rising designers. I think now, because I just have so much schoolwork, how much I actually see is quite limited. But what I do see is a lot of uh, CSM students work. And some of the CSM students that I've worked with, like Ben Benai, um, Alexander Bagnall, like these guys are amazing. Oh my God, their work is so good. I'm like, their work is like, wow, like 
your work is way more interesting than what I see from majority of these um, like massive brands. So I guess let me type that. You guys should go check them out on um, Instagram. I'll type their names in the chat. Maybe one day I'll like do a live stream with like I want to do a live stream with Alex, where he can just like explain his design process on the live stream because he is just amazing. Like the way he thinks is like wow. I really hope you don't go to a brand and they just destroy all this creativity because fashion is really good at that. You come with all these creative ideas and they're like, no, design a jacket. We need to sell. <laughs> it's nice to see the <laughs> dynamics of magazines on national level out here in Brazil reduce the number of issues per year and are taking a social approach too. It's nice to see. Yeah, I, 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 I believe in... um you know, creating print when you need to, when it makes sense. Like, for example, I have a print magazine, but I've only released one issue because I'm not just in it to just be releasing issues for the sake of just, like, releasing issues. Um, when I feel like there's a very compelling group of stories to tell, then I'll release another one. Um, and I like, I like that approach. And then till then, you can just, like, talk about fashion on social media platforms. I think uh, when we're talking about sustainability, I don't think it's good to like just keep pumping out really shitty magazines where you're going to use a lot of paper and like waste paper, especially when people don't really have like anything concrete to say at the time. Well, we've got to go, but wishing you the best. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Alexander's IG handle. Okay, I'm going to get the IGs on the screen and then I'm going to see if I can share the links. Okay, so Alex's Instagram is alexander.bagnall. So I'll put it here. Uh, Ethan Leyland is doing bits and women's wear right now. Who's that? Let me check. All I know is that some of the TSM students I've talked to, you, oh my, they are just sensational. I only just discovered Rian Finn and she's clever. Yeah, she's amazing. She does like really deep um, analysis videos on YouTube about fashion, like it's so cool. And she's been around for a while, like I followed her for years, but then what she's done is she was, she's like, oh, I just like played a video. She's um started posting more consistently. I should probably take a, a note from her page because I don't post consistently at all. I'm really bad. But it's, it's only because um like a lot of people have said like, because I post more frequently on TikTok, because it's just easier to, like, post a one-minute video. But a lot of people have said, like, I see in threads where, like, people will um, talk about my channel. And then the, all the responses will be like, oh, my God, where is that guy? I haven't seen anything from him for, like, months. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. I just have school. Final year in Central State Martins is not a joke at all. And I know for the fact that, well, once I have the degree, I have the degree. And then I can make as many YouTube videos as I want after I graduate anyway. So I guess now the priority is school. Um, and I guess some people just don't understand that. Uh, Rick Owen Spring 2023, Men and Women's Fab. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you have any idea what you will do when you graduate? I have no idea. To be very, very honest with you, I am completely lost. Because why I'm completely like confused on what I'll do after I graduate is because I study fashion journalism, 
at Sensei Martin's. But, and I do, I do work as a journalist. Like I do write for publications. Like even right now, I'm like writing an article for ID magazine. But then I make YouTube videos also. And then I'm really interested in like making films. And then I, so I'm a bit all over the place. And I don't even know what I can get a job in, if that makes sense. Because I'm definitely not going to get one of those like shitty staff writer jobs where you're slaving away for like really little money writing like thousands of words a day. I'm definitely not going to get one of those jobs. Um, so I, I really don't know. I have no clue. He says he should obviously quit school and just make videos for the YouTube channel. <laughs> That's hilarious. The problem with like being a fashion writer though, like fashion journalism is, fashion journalism is either like you're really rich or you don't even make a living wage. So when you start as a fashion journalist, you're just like so broke, you can't even afford to live. And then eventually if you make it to like, I don't know, a very senior editor or an editor in chief, now it goes from like, you can't even afford to like travel to work and pay your rent to like, oh, wow, I can actually afford to go on holiday sometimes. And so, yeah, I don't want to do any job where, like, I literally cannot afford to live because that is just a disaster. I did not go to St. St. Martin's to get a whole degree just to be, like, not being able to live. That's just a bit crazy. I can always start my own consultancy. Yeah, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. Someone asked, where can you watch the Martin Rose? Yeah, that's a good answer. Vimeo. Daily Motion, too. There's a lot of Martin Rose stuff on there. Yeah, fashion is the Nepo baby industry, 100%. Which is why it, I find it really hard to relate to a lot of people in fashion, because a lot of people in fashion already have, like... Um, like everything is already sorted out for them. Like their parents are going to get them a job and like some of them, it, it's not even like Nepo. Some, some people like they don't have connections in fashion per se, but they're from such rich families that they can afford to like take the jobs that no one else can because no one can live on like those really small wages. And then what happens is those rich kids eventually like work their way up to like senior roles, but that's because they can afford to work in like the low roles in the first place. Someone like me, where I um, support myself through everything, like is like I'm not from a rich family, so it's not like my parents are like my school fees, which are literally nine thousand two hundred and fifty pounds a year. I pay for that with my own money, um, coming out of like my money. Like, whereas some kids, their parents just pay that. So, and I had to save to be able to go to CSM. It wasn't like, yeah, I'm just going to go to CSM. No, I had to save that money. So it's just a different lifestyle. It's why I just can't relate to a lot of people. In fact, I just really can't. Uh, did you see a knock on Victoria's IG stories against nepotism? On I didn't actually see it. Oh my god! You need to tell me. Um, son of a gun, you need to hop on the live. Hop on the live. I'll send you the link in um on Instagram. One sec. That's if you can hop on. I don't know if you can. I don't know where you are. Okay, I'll just send you the link. If you can join, let me know. Tell me how to pay for school still in Europe. Um, I think in a lot of European countries, you don't have to pay for school. But the UK is, uh, first of all, we left the EU. Second of all, our government is just full of really dumb people. So the cost of school just keeps going up and up and up. In um, 
I don't know, in, let's say, 10 years, I wouldn't be surprised if it cost the exact same as school in America, to be honest. I would not be surprised. I am a male model, but I never depended on a modeling agency to find me work because they're full of it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I ate dinner. He's <laughs> stuffed and tired. <laughs> um, sorry, people are asking me CSM questions. I actually, I think I missed a few of them. Let me see if I can scroll back. Okay, classism. Is it evident at CSM? I think it, so this question, I don't know how to answer this question because I think it depends what you study. Um, so I study fashion journalism and I, I've noticed that fashion journalism is one of those courses where it's not a glamorous course. It's not the course that is known at CSM. Like when you say CSM, people just think, oh, you're a fashion designer. So Fashion journalism is not one of those glamorous courses, so it tends to attract people that have a genuine love for fashion. That's why they want to like do a whole course where they learn about the history and write about it. So actually, most of the fashion journalists are not from like rich families, and most of us are just like people that are really passionate about fashion. Apart from, of course, international students, which is a different story. Most of them have money, but that's because they can afford international fees. Um, so yeah, that tends to be the case. But from what I've heard, I think classism is like huge on the design courses because you have like super rich kids whose parents work in fashion and they're just going to CSM to get this degree. And then once they, they're done, they're just going to like go and work for their parents. I mean, like think about it. Who... Stella McCartney went to CSM, and I think for Stella McCartney's graduate show, Naomi Campbell walked in it. Can you imagine a, a like graduate degree show where Naomi Campbell is walking in it? That's just insane. But that's what nepotism gets you. Uh, it depends what you what you describe as like a good place to be in terms of CSM. Uh, CSM is like extremely competitive, but it's only because like everyone there has like high um, career goals, which is a good thing in a way. You don't want to be in a situation where you're not challenged. Like you don't want to be, I would hate to be in, a, in an environment where I don't feel challenged like at all. Um, that's not great. But yeah, CSM is like extremely competitive, like really competitive. Uh, does Parliament have some kind of fashion council? I mean, in the UK, we have the BFC, the British Fashion Council. Um, but I I don't know. I, I don't really know how to talk about these things because all these things are for designers. They're not for journalists. Like the BFC supports designers, not writers. <laughs> Michaela is leaving Gucci and Rassim is shutting down this world gets worse and worse every day. Yeah, this week has been a bit crazy when we talk about fashion. It's a bit crazy. I just looked up that for EU Student Fashion Academy of Antwerp costs 238 euros. I mean, yeah, this is why I want to move out of the UK. Um, I've been considering where I move to. I'd probably move to Amsterdam. Like, of all the places I could possibly move to, it's probably Amsterdam that seems the most appealing. Plus, I want to learn Dutch anyway, so that would be a good way to do it. Um, or Antwerp, because I want to learn Dutch. And in Antwerp, they do speak Flemish, but there's similarities to Dutch. I feel like if you understand Flemish, you kind of understand Dutch. Um, I also just tuned in. I don't know if you talked about Rafi. I just wanted to give an opinion. Yeah, definitely give an opinion. I talked about Raf, but definitely give an opinion. I think he's burnt out and has done everything he wants to do, honestly. I truly respect him for stopping now and closing the book on a good ending rather than put out garbage for the next 25 years. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seemed um, 
like he was burnt out. It definitely seemed that way. Um, so, yeah, I definitely agree that it kind of was time to sort of close things down. And his attention, like, I don't know how Raph does it. Like, Jill Sander, Dior, um, Calvin Klein, and now Prada, all while trying to run his brand. And when you look at the, like, coveted Raph Simmons collections, these are the ones from, like, late 90s, early 2000s. That was, like, what I see as peak Raph Simmons in terms of his own brand. And that was before he became heavily invested in, you know, jumping from brand to brand. Like, these are ideas that he formulated um, early in his career. And then when he just started jumping brand to brand to brand to brand, it almost seemed like he was just creatively burnt out from all the focus he was putting on his work with these brands to actually put stuff into his own eponymous label as kind of like an afterthought. Uh, trying to recapture his brand's prime. Hope they make more reissues, though, and just make the archive beast losers mad. <laughs> yeah, I really hope they do the reissues because it should be about... Because when archive, like, archive bros sell, like, they want to sell, like, a riot, riot, riot bomber for 100K, that's not going to Raph Simmons, the actual creator. It's just all that money is going to external people. So I would love for Raph to, like, reissue all of that stuff, like, all the stuff that's hyped. I would love for him to just, like, reissue all that stuff. That would be hilarious. Uh, Antwerp is boring to live. Yeah, I'm not necessarily looking for somewhere exciting. I know Amsterdam is definitely, obviously, more exciting than Antwerp. Um, for me, it's more about, first of all, the government of the UK, I just, I can't do it. <laughs> the government of the UK is just horrid. And when it comes to, because I obviously want to live in an EU country, I couldn't live in Germany because I have no interest in learning German. I wouldn't live in Italy because, oh my God, the racism, scary. France, racism, scary. Um, I'm not saying there's no racism in Antwerp, but like, if you find your, um, your, what's the word? Your like social circle, I think it's, a lot better than France and Italy, that's for sure. Um, I think people in Antwerp are just nicer than people in Italy and France. And I wouldn't live in Spain either, not trying to learn Spanish. Um, so that's kind of why, because I'm only really trying to learn Dutch. So that's why Amsterdam and Antwerp are like the most appealing places. And they're also in the EU. Oh my, so many comments. Let me see if I can catch up. Uh, how did your parents take you going for a career in fashion? My POC parents can't exactly see the fish. In me. I mean, my first degree was in chemical engineering. Um, so, <laughs> so that tells you everything you need to know. I mean, African parents don't understand fashion or the fashion industry. It doesn't make sense to them. Uh, so when I told my parents that... I was going to work in fashion, they probably thought I had, like, lost my mind. It's a bit different now because, like, my dad reads my articles or the articles I write and he, like, gives me very constructive feedback. And, like, as things have started getting better, they are starting to sort of understand it. But at the start, yeah, it was just like, what are you doing? Like, what the hell are you doing? People overreact to nepotism a lot, to be honest. We act like we don't want to make it big in life so that things are easier for our kids. Am I not supposed to use my contacts to help my kid? Yeah, I definitely think that it's it's human nature if you can help your kid to help your kid. I don't really have an issue with the parents doing what they would inevitably do. My issue is with um, kids that are benefiting from nepotism acting as if, they have it the same way as like someone like me, for example, who literally has to build something from like absolutely nothing. Because I've heard, I can't remember what TV show I was watching. I think there's a clip of this on YouTube where these models were talking about how it's so hard to be them and they were like Nepo models. And I was just like, it was almost annoying. It's like, it's fine. You're a successful model. It's okay. 
it's okay to admit that part of your success is because of your parents. Like, it's okay. Don't try to pretend that, oh my God, I like did everything myself. I worked so hard and I created this opportunity all by myself, which is what they say, which then, I think that pisses people off more so than their parents actually helping them. Do you ever get bored of contemporary fashion? I look, you find all of the news this week riveting. It reminds me of the early 10s when all of the shakeups started to happen at once. Yeah, and I think in fashion, there are always these um, points in time where we get like the musical chairs, just designers moving from brand to brand and people leaving and people's brands closing down and stuff. Um, but yeah. Ralph doesn't really design his clothes alone, which is why I think he can do it. He provides the direction and inspiration to his team and they collaboratively come up with ideas for their collections. Yeah, that's true. Um, someone that I worked with at CSM, he worked for Ralph Simmons. He was like a, he actually designed a few looks for some of the recent Ralph Simmons collections. So that I do know that to be true, actually. Uh, Raph has been worse longer than he's been good at this point. Better to stop now before we get even more bad rehashes. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree. I also think his vision has run its course. Like he was an early adopter of oversized streetwear type outfits, but over the last 20 years, that vision has been copied and improved upon greatly. Who would you say, I definitely agree with like it's been copied. Who would you say has improved upon it? Like who has... Would you say like Demna, maybe? If I was you, I'd write for the British Fashion Council. I'm sure you could go farther to have a political connection work your way up and make all the good money as well. I live in the US. The British Fashion Council is not something that you write for. Like they don't, once again, the British Fashion Council is for designers. It's not for writers. It's not, they don't do projects for writers. Like they, they, don't, they wouldn't need me to work there and be a writer. Um, they, yeah, all they need is like someone who's going to be on some panel to choose like what designers should get. And there's people like Sarah Moa that are amazing at that. Um, and Sarah Moa also writes for Vogue Runway. So there you go. <laughs> UK government is getting dragged left and right, seeing them clocked in random unrelated editorials. <laughs> I mean, the UK government is just so bad. I don't even want to talk about it. It's depressing. Our government is just a joke. Uh, come to America and change the fashion game. We need a more discerning eye in the state. I mean, Jesus, you guys have everyone. You guys have... Vanessa Friedman, you guys have um, Robin Gavon. I mean, the US is fine. The US definitely doesn't need me. He studied product design. Are you talking about Raf Simmons? I'm not sure who uh, that's in response to, but yeah, he did. His um, his school collection, I I saw it when I was at Antwerp. Um, it was really cool. Like It's like furniture. Thing. It's really cool. Uh, maybe a bit of a tangent, but okay, yeah. So you did say Demna. Okay, interesting. I was wondering if that was who you'd say. Maybe a bit of a tangent, but I wonder what fashion could even be without the extreme personalities. Hmm. Someone said thoughts on if Kiko was at LV. Actually, I would love to see that. But he isn't, he hasn't been mentioned at all as like being in contention, which is interesting, but no. Kiko LV men's, that would be so interesting. I love Kiko's menswear, even though um, it never fits me, it's for like smaller men. But aesthetically, just looking at it, I like it. If I was smaller in size and in height, I would probably, Kiko would be like one of the brands I, because the brands I buy now, it's less to do with, okay, I do love the designers, like Aunt Emelianis and stuff, but it's more to do with size. Like I can wear Andy and I can wear Rick Owens and I can wear Yoji. So then I just end up buying those brands. <laughs> you can write fashion laws legislation.
Um, Jun Takahashi and Takahiro Miyashita have vastly improved upon what Raph did. Okay, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. The soloist, undercover. Yeah. Fair enough. If you can write fashion law legislation, you can get paid. Yeah, I don't think journalists write law. <laughs> I don't quite think that's how it works. Yeah, someone said I'll see his sort of athletic type clothes there. Yeah, Kiko would actually work for LV Men's. And I'd never thought of that. That was a really good, um, yeah, that's a really good point. Tebe Mugugu at LV. A lot of people have said Tebe Mugugu at LV. I'm not, like, I love Tebe, but the thing is, Tebe is, I think, where Tebe shines, at least now, from what I've seen, his women's wear is so, 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 so good. Men's wear is to be seen. I haven't seen enough men's wear collections to really even understand what long-term Tebe's vision for men's wear is. And considering it's a men's wear role, I just don't know about that. If it was a woman's wear role, different story. Uh, Demna, I feel, improved heavy the look while also giving context to the clothing, especially the Vetmore era with the USSR post-youth culture and the scrambling to find clothes no matter the sizing. Yeah. I mean, Vetmore is just... I, I love Vetmore so much. Like, the idea and the concept of it. I just, like, I'm so sad that, like, all of that is, like, done. I know, like, Guram is trying to, like, hold on to it by the skin of his teeth, but it's not the same. It's not the same. So the problem is Kiko is not black. They've got to hire a black person for the optics. Do you really think they have to hire a black person just because Vajilablo was black? Is that necessary? <laughs> we know it's going to be Wells Bonner. He's going to tell him the guy. <laughs> I hope it's going to be Wells Bonner. I hope it's going to be Martin Rose or Wells Bonner. Those are like the two people I want. This is, you're being dead serious. Why do you think LV feel like they need to hire a black designer? I think just hire who's best for the job, which actually, now that someone has mentioned um, Kiko, yeah, I think Kiko. Yeah, Kiko would be amazing. Wow. That was such a good suggestion. LV Mend. Yeah. <laughs> you said they have to. <laughs> Do you reckon if the designer isn't black, like all the customer base are just going to be mad? Why do they have to, though? I mean, yeah, why do they have to? <laughs> Adikika referencing himself. <laughs> LV monogram style jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Virgil LV is the most black people have ever shopped at LV. They saw a huge increase in black shoppers, and you know LVMH want their pounds. Yes, but then you have to do the maths. Like, if we were to, like, go into, like, the nitty-gritty of it, um, how many black people, in comparison to, let's say, other demographics are buying it and what is the difference i don't know by the way i'm just saying and what is the difference in if let's say if they don't hire a black designer okay less black um people will buy lv but maybe a different demographic will and what's the like kickback of that what's the difference like in the long run does that make them more money or less because at the end of the day all they care about is money they don't care who buys it where they're from what skin what race all they care about is how do you make more money? They literally don't care who's buying it. Um, do you think you see large fashion brands being more charitable in the future? I think a lot about the extreme markups and how so many underserved communities could use percentages. I hope so. 
I hope so. It's why um so a lot of people ask me because I don't have many clothes. I genuinely don't. Like my shoe rack is literally there. Let me count how many pairs of shoes I have. Um I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven pairs of shoes that I wear and I've had some of them for like years and years and years. Um I don't have like a lot of clothes really. And a lot of people are like, why don't you buy a lot of clothes? It's honestly because the clothes I do like, they're just so overpriced that even though technically I could buy it, it's just like a waste of money. It's just like, it's not worth 2000 I'm not going to spend that much. I'm just not. It's just not going to happen. And it's also why I end up buying Rick Owens because like Rick Owens, I have connections to where I could buy it for less than retail, which is why I end up buying a lot of Rick or like Yoji and stuff. Um, the stuff that, yeah, stuff costs way too much these days. Like a plain ass cotton shirt from some luxury brand. They're like, yeah, 900 euros. 900 euros. Like, no. <laughs> Hell no. Do you know any South American designers, not Mexican? Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any. If if we're talking about Mexican designers, I know a few, but South American outside of Mexican, not that I can think off the top of my head. Uh, mainly because Virgil built a strong community, and I don't think there are many non-black designers who'll be able to continue that community inspired culture without them receiving any backlash. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> it's hard to type this topic without seeming weird and racist. <laughs> Easier to voice verbally. No, no, that's fair enough. I like having these conversations. I'm just playing devil's um, advocate. I'm just asking the questions. I'm just posing questions back. Wells when I feel would bring the older demographic based on what I've seen of her work and less streetwear, more traditional luxury. Yeah. Yeah, Wells Bonner's aesthetic is quite literally, and I know she's referenced this in a few collections, but it's so uh, Windrush generation. And I don't mean that in a controversial way. I mean it in, like, a good way, like how they used to dress in, like, the 70s in London. That's, like, her silhouette of um, suits and, like, pants and, like, even footwear and even marketing and campaigns and shoots. It's all that. That's the look. And that would be quite cool, actually, to bring to LV. <laughs> That's what Essence sales for. <laughs> That's actually true. I got some really nice Y Project sunglasses on an Essence sale. Uh, I don't care about the older demographic any as much anymore since Gen Z are the ones spending. I always wonder, you know how people say Gen Z are spending? Where are these Gen Zs getting this money from? Is it just that they have rich parents? Because I'm like, who the hell is Gen Z and can afford to, like, buy all this luxury stuff, like, constantly, to the point where brands are specifically marketing towards that demographic? Like, I'm like, where are these, like, I don't know where this money is coming from, but... Hey. Like what? Gen Z spending like 2k on an LV jacket. Insane. <laughs> Someone said Soul Train 1970s. <laughs> Why is everyone so hyped over Essence Black Friday? January 70% off is on me fees. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly talk. <laughs> Someone said Gen Z are finesse gods. <laughs> Influencer money. Okay, that's a good point. Influencers get so much money. Oh my god. Yeah, too bad I just don't I don't want to be an influencer. Because like where influencers get the most money is like when they get paid to like wear outfits and like stuff like that. I I sometimes I forget 
that influencers make so much money because people see me as an influencer. I think if you have like any sort of um, social media following, people see you as an influencer. And I'm like, I do not get paid for shit. I am not, do not compare me with those rich kids. I do not have money like that. Like, I really don't. <laughs> Some can't afford it and still buy it. That's sad. You shouldn't be going bankrupt because of luxury items and going into debt and stuff. Uh, look up the stats. Actually, quite interesting. Gen Z have a have higher attachments to luxury, appearance, and materialism now, like you did social media. I imagine that I can actually really agree with that. I was speaking to my friend the other day. And we were talking about how we feel sorry for kids these days because the social pressure is insane. When I was younger, what did we wear? We used to wear like Lonsdales. I'm not sure how many people are from the UK here and like know what Lonsdales are. It was cool to wear like 20 pound shoes. It was cool. Or like people used to wear like Clark's Wallabies. That is like, that was like cool to wear or kickers. Those aren't, like, super expensive. And if you were, like, really balling, you'd wear, like, Air Force Ones. These are still... And Air Force Ones then were, like, 30, 40 pounds. It's not, like, now where the price has gone up. And it's insane because compare that now to, like, kids are, like, the same age that I was wearing Clark's Wallabies. They're wearing, like, Balenciaga sneakers. And I'm like, where are all these kids getting this money from? Because I know you can't afford this stuff. Like, where the hell are you getting this money? <laughs> it's mostly wealthy kids returning it after that fit pick. <laughs> it's called going broke for the vision. That doesn't sound fun. It's much easier and cheaper to acquire vintage and rare designer than current retail designer. So I see Gen Z leaning more in that direction. Yeah, I totally agree. A lot of people wear knockoffs. Even rich people are buying knockoffs. So my idea about knockoffs is like, um, I don't agree with knockoffs only because I believe in like, um, like as an artist, if an artist creates something, um, for you to, it's either like you buy into the original to help the creator or support what the, the creator has made, or you just don't buy it at all. Um, so if I can't afford anything, I'd rather just not buy it than buy the fake, which happens 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, because I like to like support um, who has created it. And I, I think especially because I have, something that people can duplicate. Like imagine people started photocopying my magazine and then put it online as like a PDF. I wouldn't like that. So then I would be a hypocrite if I was uh, buying fakes. So that's the only reason why I'm like sort of against it fundamentally. Um, and I've always thought it was kind of weird. Like how can you be so obsessed with something that you can't afford it and you just have to have this specific piece that you just end up buying a fake. Like there's so many other things that maybe you could afford or you could thrift or, you know, it shows that like, you're just obsessed with like a very specific thing. I love that song, like the UK version of, yeah, Ross, Ross outlet stores. That would be a good uh, comparison. Although Lonsdale is like, um, it's a brand. Let me see if I can put it on the screen one sec. I'll show you. <laughs> I show you guys the shoes that were literally cool to wear in school. This is gonna be hilarious. I can't believe these are actually these are actually cool to wear. I feel like <laughs> I feel like if I show people these shoes now, they'll be like, what the hell? Um oh I can't find the Lonsdale's model I'm looking for. They're like the strap on ones. Aha, uh -huh, I found them. Yeah. I realized they just actually just look like uh, Stan Smith, actually, now that I'm looking at it. They literally look like Stan Smith. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, I don't need to show you guys. They just look like black Stan Smiths. 
Uh, same, I want the real deal. Most people buy it to look rich. Yeah, I don't understand the looking rich thing. To be very honest with you, London is not a safe place. So the last thing I want to do is look rich because that would make me a target. I do not... That's why I love that I wear, like, mostly Rick and um, Yoji because no one... Like, obviously, fashion people know what I'm wearing, but I mean, like, the average, the average everyday person that goes around robbing people for wearing expensive stuff, they would not... They would just look at me like some weirdo wearing super wide trousers. I like that. I don't like drawing a, the wrong attention. So I don't... I've never understood why people go out of their way to try and look rich or look like they have a lot of money. I would not do... I'm the kind of person that if I had a lot of money, I wouldn't buy a Ferrari because a Ferrari just draws the wrong attention. You're driving home and people start following you home because they want to know this person who has this Ferrari. Where do they live? So we can rob them. That is how unsafe London is. So I'm not... Like, yeah, I've just never understood why people want to, this, like... Especially with the Gen Z thing, like trying to look rich. I don't get it. I only ever bought a single knockoff, and that was from ones where footwear never produced in my size. I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to cope. <laughs> I'm wearing a wrapper for Rafferty because resells like 2K. I just wear around the house and never take it off. That's cool. Cozy vibes. I'm not saying that because I fundamentally disagree with um, uh, reps that you can't wear them. Only. It's just my personal like thing. Don't really think brands have completely got the Gen Z zeitgeist. Everything is stale trend cycle. Like, oh my God, I can't keep up with them because obviously I'm like recently making TikToks and stuff. I cannot keep up with the trend cycles on TikTok. They are so insane. Like, it's so hard to keep up with. Just arrived. Have you seen the Panboy comment, LV, under the picture of Alessandro McKellen? Not sure, but what it means. Yeah, I know. And Panboy is, like, really well known. And, like, he's deep in the industry. So he definitely knows something I don't know. So him, you know kind of hinting that Alessandro Michele might go to LV. It's something to consider. On top of that, knockoffs also have even less quality control slash environmental legislation and are often used to fund bigger criminal organizations. Yeah, they are used to fund uh, criminal organizations, actually. That is true. Yeah, Lonsdale is a boxing brand. It is. It is. At 6-4, we are not targets. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, uh, okay, a good example is, like, I don't understand why people buy expensive jewellery. Not because, like, there's anything wrong with it. I just always thought, like, as someone that lives in London, it's so dangerous to have expensive jewellery. Like, you have no idea how dangerous it is. Like, I've heard stories of people have Rolexes and they're in an Uber and, like, a group of robbers block the Uber, smash into the car, drag the person out and, like, chop their wrist off just so they can take their wrist with the watch on it and run away. Like, people lose fingers because people don't... Like, robbers don't have time to wait for, like, someone to remove a ring to give it to them. They're just, like chop their finger off and, like, run with their finger. Like, it's not a joke. Like, this world is not a safe place. I don't understand why, like, people have, like, watches that cost the price of a house walking around London thinking it's safe, because it's not. It really isn't. He said, for real, I tuck my chains when I'm in unfamiliar areas in NYC. Smart decision. Very smart decision. <laughs> I got the kid super and hair and Preston beta test with TD printed shoes. I had to scan my feet with my phone and was trying to justify paying <laughs> $350 for my pair. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> 
I have a large and pretty pricey wardrobe, mostly not to look rich or because I love clothing and the work of my favorite designers, Adi, Tom, Alessandro. No, that's really cool. I think what I mean by look rich is like um, obvious to the average person. So if you're wearing um, Adi Simar, I don't know, Dior, or I don't know what Adi Simar we're talking about, Yves Saint Laurent, or well, Saint Laurent Paris, um, or Celine, whatever it is, I still don't think the everyday average person knows what that is. Or like Tom Brown, I don't think they actually know that it's Tom Brown. It just looks like really cool, nice clothes or Alessandro Michele's Gucci, unless it like has a big G or whatever. Um, I don't think people know what this stuff is. I, when I say dressing rich, I mean people that wear like expensive watches. They wear, um, you know, the really heavily branded clothing expensive sunglasses with all the branding on it expensive rings like the cartier rings and bracelets and stuff that's what i mean by like dressing rich i just think that sort of stuff just makes you a target so i live in london too you're making it sound like the wild wild west i think maybe it depends on where you live as well once again i'm not a posh kid i don't really live in um a nice area um but it that stuff that I'm talking about, it happens and it happens often. Like, I don't know where you live in London, but it happens all the time. Like, literally all the time. Like, I have friends that it's happened to, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, I'm sad for a moment, but I think Gucci's peak ended around 2019. So the departure was expected. Okay. That's interesting you said the peak. I mean, Alessandro Michele's um, aesthetic has started to get, like, predictable, I guess, at Gucci. Um, so, yeah. I feel the same way about watches. The coolest watches are little weird old watches that have character compared to Rolex. Yeah, I would agree with that. When is the last time someone switched from carrying to LVMH? Uh, didn't uh, Adi Simon do it? Right? Yeah, he did. Um, personally, I'm trying to get that Adi Celine because my ghetto fat donkey ass can fit the oversized look. <laughs> why? Why? Why so self-deprecating? <laughs> <laughs> Gucci Mummy <Mami> Monogram. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> why people are so devastated by the Alessandro news is because when you think of Gucci, you think of Alessandro. That's definitely the case right now. I can't even imagine uh, another aesthetic at Gucci. It's almost been like cemented in my head. Because the thing about fashion history a lot is that most of the fashion history I know, I've read about it because I didn't live through most of the stuff. Whereas, like, the Alessandro Gucci era, like, I, le I lived through all of it. So, as far as I'm concerned, my personal experience with Gucci, a lot of it is just, like, Alessandro as a fellow Gen Z. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be so weird when they go in a different direction. It's going to be... I can imagine it's going to be the same as, like, um, all the people that hated Alessandro's Gucci when he first started because it was so different to Frida... And also different to Tom Ford, we might have that reaction now, which is funny, like full circle. <laughs> I'm more sad about choosing his first streetwear collab <laughs> than Raphael Alessandro. <laughs> Tom Ford is greater than Michele. Yeah, I mean, I would agree only because you don't have Ad Alessandro Michele without Tom Ford. End of story. Whereas it doesn't happen the other way around. You have Tom Ford, even if Michele never became creative director of Gucci, you still have Tom Ford because he was before. So <laughs> the Roberts and West Indies just run out of the Montclair Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have the, the ass that most of them want that I just want to fit in. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> Welcome to the big ass club. I mean, god damn, I have a big bum too. So, um, <laughs> I'm with you in solidarity. <laughs> Who is the longest standing successor of a design house currently living? Oh, that's a really cool question. It's a good exercise. So Sarah Burton has been at McQueen for like a while, but I still don't think that that would be the longest um, one. How long has Olivier been at Balmain? Olivier has been at Balmain for a while. Um... I was going to say Jeremy Scott, but he hasn't been at Moschino for that long, compared to, like, Olivier. Um, who else has been at a house for a really long time? Um, Virginie has been at Chanel for a while, but obviously not as, like, the creative director. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Who's been at a brand for a really long time? Yeah, I'd have to think about that. Someone said Mucha Prada, but is Mucha a successor? Mucha isn't really a successor. Mucha is just, like, she's just been there from the start of the ready-to-wear at Prada. So, yeah. I guess if we're talking, like, longest standing at a brand, it would be Mucha, like, currently alive. Or you have to go and... but. All the, all the longest, because I was thinking of successors. If we start talking about, you know, people that, like, at their own brand, then we're going to start talking about, like, Yoji Yamamoto, who has had his brand forever. Or, you know, those kind of people. We start bringing those names in. Yeah, it might it might be Sarah Burton. Yeah, it was definitely Carl before he passed, definitely. <laughs> Me just been that brother since Jesus died. <laughs> oh my god. So Olivia had his 10 year anniversary. Okay. 10 years is a long ass time. I'd love to see a new story at Balmain, to be honest, even if I like what Olivier is doing. But I think Olivier, for once again, he's been at Balmain for so long at this point that it's just like what what other aesthetic could it have? It would be so weird, similar to like, we associate Alessandro's aesthetic with Gucci. It would be so weird to see anything else. It's mad how Gucci is so popular, but the Alessandro look isn't, it's weird. Nobody dresses like Alessandro's vision, but so many people buy Gucci. I mean, that's the thing. At the end of the day, like all these luxury brands, they really just make most of their money from accessories and perfume anyway. Um, and when you when you go into the stores, like if you go into a Gucci store, there's not anything there. Like all these luxury stores, they're just always empty. It's just like bags and just bags and loads of bags. There's not even really a lot of clothes. Unless you go to places like in DSM, there's like a Gucci section. You might see a few of like Alessandro's bits. I remember when Chris was at Dior for 11 years. Yeah. Long ass spell. Long ass spell. And I feel like Chris um, Van Asch's time at Dior kind of went under the radar. <laughs> I'm so ready for a new bummer. How do you feel about what uh, JPG is doing right now? When you say uh, Jean Paul Gaultier, do you mean. The couture thing where he's sort of um, inviting designers to design couture, like, because we've had Tito Siabe, Glenn Martins, Olivier. Yeah. Are you talking about that or are you talking about just Jean Paul Gaultier in general? Yeah, the boutiques already have the coolest runaway items. Yeah, like, it's because, it, like, the that stuff they're not sure that all that runway stuff is going to sell. So they put all the commercial stuff in the stores. And if you want any of the runway stuff, you have to actually put in an order yourself. Um, And a lot of fashion brands now, they have like the buy now, see now, like with Balenciaga runway shows, after the runway shows, um, 
you can put in an order for like some of the looks, but you you won't find a lot of that stuff in the stores. You won't. I think as someone from Gen Z, considering the weird fast paced trends fashion, Alessandro did what was needed for Gucci, but needs. I think you mean to go the same way Demna did for Blanciaga, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. Yeah, true, that's why it can be interesting. Um, I really enjoyed Christoph Barman. Where the hell is he? Yeah, I know. Sometimes people just like, even Hyder Rackerman, I think sooner or later, like 10 years from now, if he doesn't get any roles um, at a fashion brand, it's going to be the same. We're going to be like, oh my God, Hyder Rackerman was actually at like Baluti and like, he was all over the industry and stuff. I'm like, where is he? Who appoints a new creative director first, Gucci or Louis Vuitton? I think at this point it has to be Louis Vuitton because they've been working on this forever. Yeah, I think, yeah, Louis Vuitton will probably announce a new creative director first, but I could be horribly wrong. Like, I could be extremely wrong. So... Like, don't, don't hold me to that. These are amazing questions, actually, because I haven't done um, a live stream for so long. I wasn't sure what the response would be. And I also didn't announce the live stream, so it was kind of random. I'm surprised how many people are um, actually here listening to me ramble about fashion. Do any of you know where Phoebe Fowler is? Uh, this is another thing where um, I have some insider info. If you want to know, DM me on Instagram, but I'm 100% not going to say it publicly on the live stream. <laughs> I is looking like he's living his best life at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I saw what happened with Balenciaga. I said, someone asked me earlier, um, I said that essentially I can't really talk about it because with, you know, children, um, kids, underage kids, it's a very sensitive topic and therefore I have to have like all the facts ready because there are some stuff that are still in limbo. Um, and I don't want to like jump the gun and talk about it when, you know, all the facts aren't out. Yeah, I'm really hyped for Haida at uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Because from my understanding, has Hyder ever done a couture show? Like, has couture show before? I don't think so. Has he? So it'd be quite cool. I'm trying to think, has he? <laughs> the big question is where Shane Oliver? I mean, Shane Oliver was uh, designing Kanye West last runaway show before the controversy happened. Yeah, Thomas Meyer at Bottega. Where, what is Thomas, no, I need to Google Thomas Meyer because Thomas Meyer actually had a really good spell at Bottega. I think at the end, I think eventually he wasn't doing well financially, but he was doing so well financially for a long time at Bottega actually. I have a whole, um, one sec, let me see if I still have it. I have a whole research file on my laptop on Bottega, like from Thomas Meyer and stuff. If I can find it, I'll put it on the screen for everyone else to see. Um, where is that thing? Let's see. Do I have it? Do I have it? Do I have it? Let's see. Oh, yes, I have it. I have it. How do you think the departure of Raph will give other brands an idea of not having one designer or a single creative director, of course, in light of Gucci as well? Um, I don't think it's going to change anything, to be honest. I think it's still more efficient to have one designer. When you have 
multiple designers making the ultimate decision, it becomes a bit complicated, personally, at least. Obviously, it can work, like, with Raph and Mitra, but... Yeah, I'm personally looking forward to Daniel Lee's Barbie. I really want to see what he does. I really want to see. Do you excited for this whole kind of overhaul of creative directors? Do you know what excited me the most? What excited me the most was... um. So I was in Milan for the last fashion week. And it was probably one of the most exciting fashion weeks I've ever been to. Because at Milan, you had Maximilian, who was... um essentially having his debut at Ferragamo. Um, you have, who else? There are so many, like Bali. Reedy had his um, debut at Bali. You had Marco Di Vincenzo. He had his debut at Etro. Like there are so many debuts that it was. And then even the guys at Chisardi, it was their second collection, I think. So there was so, there was just so much to look for. It felt so um, fresh. Like Matthew Blasey was having like another like collection at Bottega. It was just so, yeah, so exciting. All these new designers and this like fresh blood in fashion. I've never been that excited about a fashion week for a long time. I don't mind Bottega, but he got stale after the session of 2008. A few designers weren't able to make that quick switch from fashion being a fantasy to commercializations. Yeah. Yeah, it did almost kill Prada as well. <laughs> the famous creative director musical chairs. Yeah. Um, if you guys don't know what I do in my live streams for the people that are new, um, before I go, I post the link into the chat. And basically, anyone, if you want, you can like follow the link and you can hop onto the live with me and you can give your thoughts on like what we're talking about. So, in this case, today it would be just Alessandro Michele leaving Gucci and also Ras Simmons closing his brand. Oh, Hernan is coming as well. So, that's cool. Uh, do you think buying from small designers slash brands is the future? It feels more personal. I think some people already buy from small brands. I mean, I try to support um, up and coming creative directors. So yeah, I think a lot of a few people are doing it. Milan sounds like a it was a dream. Hope that energy stays in Jan for the next one of shows. Yeah, I totally agree. And the thing about Milan was. I guess in a good way, I wasn't filming a lot of it because so much stuff was happening and I was like working, like I was working for Montclair and stuff. So I didn't really have time to like vlog or like film too many things, but I guess it was kind of good just to like be in the moment and like go to the shows in the moment, not really film anything, just experience it in real time. I think it was quite refreshing because there's not many, yeah, I haven't had that feeling in a long time, just going and just really experiencing things without having to like, okay, let me get some like Instagram stories and let's get this one for TikTok. I love your videos, thank you for putting them together. Thank you so much for watching. I have been um, doing a lot of stuff in the background. Like I bought a new mic. I'll show you guys actually. I bought like a, this is like an adapter. It's like a, so in my next videos, I'll be like, you know those YouTubers that have like the road mic close to their mouth. And I have um, this stuff, like the Rode Wireless Go. So hopefully my audio quality will be a lot uh, crispier. Because where my office is, like where I am now, it's quite an echoey room, which is why I actually needed a lav mic, like something like this to work. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate everyone that watches the videos.
Uh, were the allegations against Daniel Lee true? The racism and bad conditions been curious for the last year. So I don't actually know. Obviously, I've heard the rumours. I just don't know if they're true because I haven't been able to con like confirm it. So they are rumours. A lot of people have said the rumours, but in terms of like concrete proof, which as a journalist, I have to like, you know, have the concrete proof before I can say for a fact he's racist or he's this or he's that. Just like journalism, journalistic integrity. <laughs> Not him at Burberry now. <laughs> Oh, hello there. Well, hello there. Okay, you got me. I I, I kind of came in too, too early. <laughs> Here we go. Go on. Hi. Give us a house tour. Yeah, you're just get. You don't want to see my room. <laughs> you don't want to see my room. I didn't unpack since I came from Croatia, so I'm like, <laughs> trust me, you don't want to see it. <clears throat> I haven't seen you in such a long time. My God. I know, right? Just a few hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a few hours. It's a little like an hour. But it's good. Oh How God, you doing? That's funny. I'm great. How have you been? Did you go to get food or something? <laughs> I just had food right now. <laughs> yeah, I literally had food. I like went for a quick exercise after our live. Um, oh wow! That was fun, honestly. That was Snatched. pretty fun. Who? Me? You. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, no, but like I literally like went for a quick exercise, and now, <laughs> so I can finally eat at eleven p.m. <laughs> it makes all the sense. But yeah, what are you guys talking about? Let me see this chat. Yeah, it's, wow, it's very comprehensive chat. Uh, we've just been going around asking about different designers who would work where. Someone actually said Kiko for LV men's, and I think that actually makes a lot of sense, aesthetically. Mm. Um, so that was interesting. <laughs> it's been um, a long time seeing both of you here. Yeah, I know. I haven't. I haven't done a live stream in like hi, forever. And then, do you know what well, what the people well, want to know? These live streams are like so much more relaxed than the ones on Instagram. Am I crazy? Yeah. Like these are like they so are. chill. Like I don't I don't feel like I have to talk all the time. Like we can be quiet and like people are gonna be like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Honestly. Like people wanna know what? Oh yeah, people yeah, wanna know. People wanna know I did not go to the, Stanford. The people this know. is not this is not my <laughs> I did not go to Stanford. I did not. How did you there. know? <laughs> Is that really the question? <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. Okay. Um, so the people want to know, when are you starting your YouTube channel? <laughs> I knew you were going to put me on spot. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I think that like, uh, I, I'm going to start by the end of this month, I think. Um, okay. And and okay, and don't hate me. And I know that this is a completely <laughs> not the audience for it, but um, one of the reasons why I want to do it is because I want to talk shit about Emily and Paris styling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That that great. to be fair, as a first video, that would be hilarious. <laughs> That would be hilarious. Yeah. It, well, it's going to happen. So I'm like, you know what? Like, I think that I have to do something like that. Um, but, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm starting. I'm starting pretty soon. It's just like, I'm so lazy. It's like TikTok, Instagram, and now on top of it, you lazy know. is not a word you should use with yourself. You're definitely not lazy. <laughs> oh my god, I you post so consistently <laughs> I, yeah. on, well, on you TikTok know what? and Instagram. I'm like. Sometimes when I have no idea how you do it. But but to be honest, like these are the days like today. The, the like content just like creates itself. Yeah. 
on days like this. Ask me that when like there's when BOF doesn't post an article, <laughs> and I'm like, well, <laughs> it's better to the usual spiel. <laughs> Maria Grazia is not good for you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like I prefer this just because like it's so much more relaxed. Honestly, it's why so do you, why relaxed. do you think that is though? That YouTube live streams are more chill than like Instagram lives. Oh, okay. Let me let me ask you this. This is going to be posted on your channel, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So then I should. I should <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to ask? Because I don't know. No, because like on like my live streams are like just like I'm like it's for the moment. If you're there, you're there. That's it. I'm not, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because I don't save them or anything. So um it's always it's always like if you're online and you're catching us talk shit, <laughs> good for you. That's it. <laughs> so no, but um what were we talking about? No, oh, people are playing Your YouTube chairs. channel. Oh, uh, it's coming. I, I, I promise it's coming. It's coming pretty soon. I want to talk, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about like how much, um, Balenciaga, Balenciaga had an influence on Givenchy when they right. were like back in like the fifties and sixties. Um, cause I think like that's not being talked enough. Yeah. Um, you know, people are giving like Givenchy all the credit without mentioning Balenciaga, which is kind of like not fair. Yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of, um, it's why I support a lot of new YouTube channels, because I always felt like, like, there's so many video ideas that haven't been done. So, like, Understitch is um, here right now. Understitch has a really good channel. If you guys uh, aren't subscribed, you need to subscribe to Understitch. Um, nice. But, like, okay, I'll give you an example of, like, I someone hasn't made a comprehensive Scaparelli fashion history video on YouTube yet. I don't know why, but... Yeah. It's out there in the open for someone to make. Paul Poiret, no one has. Madeleine Vianney, no one has. Uh, Charles Dames, no one has. Like, there's so many designers that, like... You see, you see, you see me writing down, just be like, which one did you say? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, there's so many designers that... Um, like, I'm just even looking at my bookshelf, like, 90% yeah. of designers on this bookshelf, some people haven't covered. But because I'm in school, I don't have time to do it. So mm -hmm. I would hope that for the sake of just fashion knowledge being out there, that people are doing it. Okay, Understitch is on the Scaparelli. That's great. That's okay, great. Okay, so let, let me let me let me cross that one. <laughs> yeah, trying to go on YouTube with these names are hard, exactly. I mean, Jesus Christ, I have almost a hundred thousand subscribers, and if I made a video about a designer no one knows, it would literally get two thousand views. <laughs> Still. Well, that's two thousand more than like I'm going to get. So you know, <laughs> let's let's count our blessings over here. <laughs> no, but like I'm like, oh, speaking of uh, Charles James, um, when I was in Paris, which I did not, I, uh, was such a nice surprise. So I I went to see the Jean Charles uh, Castelbajac. I went yeah. to see his presentation, which is brilliant, by the way. That man is like full of stories left and right, right? So um, I asked him, I said, like, who do you think is the most underrated designer of all time? And he mentioned Charles James. That's a good point. Although, would you say Charles James is underrated? I think Charles James is literally has a reputation I, I as agree. being like an architect of like Correct. design. Like, like when you mentioned Zach Posen, you, you mentioned yeah, exactly. Charles James. But um, but um, he, you know what? I I take his opinion just because like that man has been in the game for such a long mm. time, and and like the stories that he has, I'm like I'm like dude, like he had a, a collaboration with Vatican, <laughs> with Vatican, like fucking Pope. <laughs> wore, okay, I hope that there's like not a lot of Christians here. Uh, <laughs> Pope, Pope wore his robe. Yeah. Which is crazy. And then, like, he had a rainbow on the priest's dresses. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm like, a rainbow on priest's dresses. And that was back in, <laughs> back in the late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
I was so happy to see that presentation, honestly. Yeah, so the, the collab, somebody mentioned collab with Vatican. So yeah. basically, um, he wanted, uh, Pope had this kind of like rope that has like uh, colorful triangles, but all the priests, and it was like shit ton of priests. It was like, oh my, I love that I can curse here nicely. <laughs> um, but like it was a shit ton of priests and all of them had rainbows on it. And he said that um, he was talking to the Pope and he said, I know, you know, rainbow does symbolize, you know, gay. He's like, I want to yeah. make sure that like you do not get into any issues about that. And the Pope said, you cannot copyright a rainbow. So he's like, you have my full p uh, permission to go with rainbows. Oh, wow. You know, so yeah, that was very cool. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that was very cool. That's what he killed him. <laughs> Let's see who else is like here. That, like, I even have books. So I have books on, um, these are all video ideas, but when I graduate, maybe. So I have a book called Dress for War. <laughs> He's like, I'm going <laughs> to... And the book is about um, just the wartime and, like, how things are rationed, but really detailed, like, really, really oh, nice. detailed on, like, war. And, like, it will be really good to, like, relate that to all the couturiers, like, what they were doing at the time, not just, like, Dior. Funny that you um, mentioned uh, that. Go for it. Yeah, Funny not just Dior, because people always mention Dior when it comes to wartime fashion. Um, and maybe a bit of Balenciaga. People mention Balenciaga. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's just so... Yeah, I'm just looking at my bookshelf. There's so many ideas. It's just like time. There's no time. I have a dissertation <laughs> to write. No, I was... Um, I went to Barnes & Noble, which, um, for people that don't know what Barnes & Noble is, it's... Um, you know what Barnes & Noble is, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, Not I was that reading. Bad. No, <laughs> so I was reading. Um, I was reading about um, about uh, Christian Dior, and then there was one chapter when they were talking all about um, uh, when the war started. How everybody in fashion, from Lanvin to 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 I don't know who else they 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 mentioned. I'm trying to find the quote. Um, but all of them changed their oh here we go um uh, and i'm reading from a book that i did not buy i just took a <laughs> i'm not spending 16 dollars on two pages they can suck my dick um <laughs> so he said they said that like piquet show a reversible uh wool outfit the cape that could be used as a blanket hermes uh, presented versatile plate hooded caps. Then, like they go for like Scaparelli, it featured one piece zipper jumpsuit available in blue and shocking pink. Lanvin made tweed tweed gas mask decorated uh, case decorated with silver studs. Like so many of them, just kind of like changed their aesthetic mm -hmm. to to fit war. All of them except Balenciaga. Yeah. Balenciaga that was like, you want glamour? I'll give you glamour. Yeah. <laughs> so. This is why he normally gets mentioned alongside Dior when it comes to like wartime fashion. Yeah, sure. That's true. Even though I prefer him a lot more than, than Dior. Wait, Understitch, you post every Sunday. I thought you post more frequently than that. It feels like you do. I don't know why. Interesting. Yeah, understand. Your your work rate is impressive. I have to follow. I have to follow Understitch. Yeah, Understitch makes really good videos. Really, really good videos. So um, yeah. <laughs> wow, your work rate is wow, commendable. Like what this person? Yeah, like. <laughs> Man is YouTube machine level productivity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, let's do the the standard. What have you been reading? What have you been reading right now oh, or recently? I, um, I'll show you. <clears throat> so these are the two books that I brought with me to Croatia. But... Um, I love that I'm like thinking that I'm going to like sit in Croatia and read. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> uh, 
I literally did like one chapter. I'm I'm reading Anna. Ah, I'm reading Anna I, haven't, by, I haven't read that yet. By is it Andrew really Dell. is it really that interesting? Well, I'm on I'm I'm the worst person to ask that right now because I'm on chapter three. Why does it have so many bookmarks when you're on chapter three? Oh no 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 they are they're messed up. They're messed up. This is just like the first three chapters. Oh wow! <laughs> but it's just because Dash. it was in my it was in my suitcase. <laughs> it was it was in my suitcase. But um, it does have like some interesting stuff. Like she's a huge, huge Hillary supporter, and from what I understood is that like when Hillary lost the election, she literally came to the. Oh, get this! So, which is crazy. So she had a brother. When she was, uh, you know, when she when she was uh, she was born in like nineteen forty nine, I think. Yeah. So she had a ten year old brother who passed away. He got hit by a car. Oh right? my! So they call her dad. I think his name was Charles or something. I cannot remember. Yeah. Uh, they call her dad, who was working in newspapers, and. They tell him, hey, like your son uh, just passed away. He was, you know, he was admitted to the hospital. This man goes back to work. Legit goes back to work. Doesn't even acknowledge this at all. Whoa. And, and after that goes, you know, after his work, he goes back to the office, tells everybody what to do, finishes his shift, and goes back to his dead son. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, oh. honestly. So, like, for the beginning, it does have, like, I like Amy's writing because she's very concise. She's very Ooh, much I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna this, 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 this. I'm so, so I'm going, yeah, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to continue this, uh, definitely. Um, but I mean, like, it goes into, like, you know, Anna's yeah. financial, uh, financial, like, with her, uh, her parents' financial um where is that yeah so so the worst part is that so what was the young person oh here we go <laughs> so so said that's why hillary is always invited to the map yeah there we go so the, <laughs> Everything makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so it says like instead of like going going to home, he had had back to the meeting and carried on with his work, making no mention of his son. And the worst part out of the whole thing, this guy who killed him, I think that he hit him with a car or something. Listen how ridiculous this is. The man behind the wheel was charged with, n not with manslaughter, but only dangerous driving. Though what? he faced, listen, it gets even crazier. Though he faced a maximum jail sentence of two years, after ultimately being convicted, he was ordered to pay a fine of 10 pounds. Bitch. 10 pounds. I know it's still a lot back then, but still, even relatively to back then, shook it. that's I will, I will that's shook it. insane. Honestly, that is insane. But Damn. but yeah, it's it, so so far. I mean, for the first three chapters, it's very good. That's good. I've I've bookmarked it anyway. So yeah, this is my tick. This is my TikTok content. <laughs> oh, and the second book is the one that you actually uh, read. Yeah, that's yep. a good book, King of Fashion. Um, that and I have um, I have a couple of them screenshot screenshotted in my in yeah. my um, in my phone that I have to get. So we'll see. Yeah, Paul Poirier is amazing. Although I am critical on how obsessed he was with like Orientalism, he almost like. It almost became like a fetish for him. But that's my only criticism. It's like he did kind of fetishize um, Asian culture a bit. Oh, really? Um, yeah. You'll see when you read the book and like you go through his references and stuff. But yeah, that's my like main criticism for him. Yeah. I, like, I mean, like that. And what else do I have? I have no idea. 
Oh, I'm not. I'm not reading uh, chic savages. I started. <laughs> I'm sorry. I started it. I'm not finishing it. There's no way. They're talking about everybody except the designers. Honestly, they're talking about fucking like Nan Kemper wearing the Saint Laurent dress. I'm like, yeah, how but she that's got because into a car. I'm like, you know, like I feel like it's to do with the publisher, like certain publishers and I'm starting to get more privy to it. Yeah. They will only approve a book if it's very juicy because they feel like it would sell. But for people like us who actually just want to know about the fashion, exactly. it's just annoying. It's literally Is just that... annoying. I'm like, I love you, Nan <laughs> Kempler, but like, I cannot read another like YSL dress. God yeah. bless you. What else do I? Have? Oh, I bought this, but I don't think I'm going to be reading anytime soon. Um, it's called Paris Fashion. It's by Valerie Steele. Oh, I've never read that. What's that about? Yeah. Just well, I don't, Paris Fashion. It's, well, it's I think it's like breaking down fashion before, um, like, the, I think all until like the 1960s. Right. So it talks a lot about like um, about worth. It's talk. It talks a lot about like Chanel and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm curious. Like Fortuny and you know those people, yeah. but then like it has like the stuff from like 1600s also. So pleat God, we need to start giving people nicknames. Like people call Fortuny the pleat God, and then they call yeah. uh, Madeleine Vianney the Queen of the Bias Cups. Oh, there you go. Every everyone needs to have like, I like uh, those. a nickname. They, they call yeah. uh, they call um <laughs> Ali, Alaya, they call him uh, the Titan of Tight. Yeah, that favorite. makes sense. I love that though. They call Balenciaga <laughs> the monk of fashion. Yeah, I've heard so, that. that. We need to is, we need to eventually come up with like names for all of them. They call so, so we the stop, Nazi we of stop. fashion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Imagine it's, we like it's, we stop it's, saying um, their actual names, and we're just like, "Oh, the Queen of Bias Cup." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, "Rat, rat, leave your name." <laughs> that joke about Chanel, it's it's true. Yeah, well, it is true. Yeah, well, it is true. It's, it's 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 not my fault that it's historically true. <laughs> it's a Miyake, um, the Prince of Fleets. What else do I have? You know which uh, book I want to uh, read again. The Chiffon Trenches. I still haven't read that. I By really Andrew Leon Talley? Yeah, I haven't. And I have it. I just haven't read it. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah, um, that's that. And then I have to get, like, new books. Yeah, I'm, I'm at a point where I need to buy some new stuff. My lecturer just wrote a book that I really want to buy. It's, like, about fashion film. So that's, yeah. Wait, like, what really are you reading cool. right now? Um, I can get it. It's over there. I um just read a book about Gilles Van Noten. Like, oh, nice. it just analyzes like his whole career. Um, and I reread The Beautiful Fall. So those are like the recent oh, nice. things I've read. Oh, I have to finish The Beautiful Fall. That's true. You have to. It's such a good. It's so good. Like it's bitch. such a good. I've literally read it twice now. Such a good book. I uh, well, I am on. I'm on page like two fifteen. I had to. I had to continue this. Yeah, let me it's get the really Drees good. book. Actually, I see. This is another thing. I could make a video on Drees because I just read the book. But time, the time it would take to like put all the pictures yeah. and together, it's just like, uh, are I really going to do that? Probably not. Anyway, <laughs> let me go. Let me go get the book. I'll leave you. Sure. Oh, what is that? Oh. So, um, what, I don't, what do you want me, um, hi. <laughs> Watch people just say disappear. So we're just going to wait for him here. Hi. A new host. <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. So how is it to be on a date with me? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a heads up, dude. They just tell you. <laughs> I'm just like, I knew you would say some funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot just be like, bloop. 
<laughs> Bloop, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Anders. Such, I appreciate that. Hanan takes over fashion. Oh, yeah. art. So, this oh, is the book, by the way. It's, it's a um, new host in town. Jay's Van Noten Shape, Print and Fabric. And it's really, yeah, it's just it analyzes all his runway shows, the history of the Antop Six. Wait, did you read it or was... you're reading it now, right? No, I've read it. Oh, okay. I've read it. It's like so detailed, too. It oh, has I like love that. everything, like everything Jeez Van Noten, just like everything. Like, it's so good. I love um, that. But yeah, so I just finished that. And I'm like a Dries Van Noten fanboy now. Not like I wasn't before, <laughs> but I, I think more so now. It was such a good show. The last show that like he did was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, God, my top three favorite on Paris. It was really good. <laughs> that takes over fashion archive. <laughs> yeah, is it, I'm gonna I'm gonna like come next time and just be like, there's a new host in town. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's good. But yeah, life's been crazy. I got, I, got a, I, I got my first death threat today, just so you know, because of Valenciaga. I swear to uh -oh. God, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even joking. Uh -oh. Honestly, like legit a death threat. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever gotten a death threat. I think the type of people that will send me death threats, they just default to like being really racist instead. Oh, there you go. So yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it even it evens it out, honestly. <laughs> oh my! I swear to God, not... it's so weird. I'm yeah. like, are you? I'm like, if I ever went on somebody's page and like started, first of all, I would never write a hate comment in somebody's DM like that. That is just like ridiculous. That's, That's why it's weird enough. for me to understand. I've never written a hate DM to anyone, so I don't understand <laughs> the mindset of um. Like sending oh. death threats and stuff. Wait, do, do you want me to read it to you? It says, <laughs> it says, shut the fuck up, you whore. You're defending, <laughs> I swear to God, I swear to God. It says, shut the fuck up, you whore. you defending oh Balenciaga. You will be getting killed soon. Whoa. I know where you live. Whoa. <laughs> Some Even people though, in this world it's, are angry. It, is this grammar right? You will be getting killed soon. Is the grammar right there? It kind of is. You will be okay. getting killed soon. Yeah. Okay, something's off on that, with that sentence. Well, but, it, it, but it I, should be you will get killed soon. But getting you. is, but it get getting it sounds off, but it's actually still correct. It's okay. like present continuous, but. But I mean, the, yeah. I mean, let's start with the opening line. Shut the fuck up, you whore. I'm like, <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> I just don't understand why people are just so angry. Yeah. I'm like, it's just like, I'm allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> so, but, so I'm making a video on YouTube. My God, the comments are wild. I remember when I'm, <laughs> you know, when Dolce and Gabbana did the, um, the whole thing about China. Yeah. Um, like the whole racism thing with China, right? I made a video on it, and that is probably the most hate I've gotten in one no video in my entire life. Like, I got, I made a video about John Galliano and like the whole um, Nazi thing that got a lot of hate, but I expected it. But with the DNG one, people, it was basically just people saying, like, first of all, they were being really racist. And then it was just Wait, like what was your saying, what was your stand on it? Like why were they like I was just saying that D and G like it was really racist what was done. Okay. okay. Um and people were just coming in and saying that China is buying Africa. China will own you people soon. And then people just got really racist and they were like, China don't care about you monkeys anyway. I was like, Oh my god, people no. are mad. <laughs> That People were mad. That is sick. I swear to God. Yeah, it's That's it's the internet though. Thing. I think I think um, it's to be expected. It's the internet. Like people can post whatever, sure. um, anonymously. So it's like, yeah, if if that makes you feel better, I don't know. 
Well done. So, so, Congratulations. So, so, honestly. Honestly, so somebody, something is off, but it's not the it's grammar. Not the grammar. <laughs> yeah, it's the mindset that yeah. like somebody's on the right. <laughs> it's the rage. It's the, it's the rage. I'm like, it's, it's, and then people are like accusing me. They're like, you're one of them. And I'm like, I made a fucking TikTok. <laughs> like, you need to yeah. chill. You fucking need to chill. But hey, it is what it is. Ah, fashion. Yeah. Interesting world. So there's a level of like, you know, other people, yeah. It, but that, that's the thing. Like, when I talk on camera, like, we talk like we would talk like this. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm not going to dissect everything that I'm going to say to make sure nobody gets pissed off. Yeah. I mean, YouTube is, YouTube is always a hard thing because, um, like with YouTube, and I'm sure anyone that has made YouTube videos has this thing. It's like, I can like read a whole book before I make a video. And then I'm like editorializing the video. So I'm trying to yeah. understand like, okay, what is the most key information to make sure that this video isn't long? And then the first comment is like, you don't know what you're talking about. You missed this part <laughs> out. And it's like, it's like, oh, God. It's like, oh. <laughs> It's a the, summary. You, you can't can help it. You, you can. <laughs> it's like, it's a summary. There's always that person who just has to prove that, like, you don't know anything. I know more than you. And it's like, exactly. it's a summary. Dude, dude, I so I posted that TikTok about Balenciaga. By the way, Casey, thank you. I agree with you. Um, I posted a TikTok about, about Balenciaga, and I said the words... Uh, I know about Balenciaga more than an average person does because this video is going to be seen by fucking Mary Ann yeah. that works at at Seven Eleven. You know, like she's not familiar with Balenciaga, and then people will come in at me. They're like, "Oh, you think you know more about Balenciaga than me?" I'm like, "Nobody said that, bitch. Nobody <laughs> said that." I'm like, "I'm not going to like." You're just giving myself. your opinion. <laughs> Exactly. I'm not going to uh, explain myself to like every fucking person on on the internet. Like, Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. Sometimes, to be fair, it, it is actually quite entertaining. Like, I do laugh. Like, yeah. there are some comments that are like they're supposed <laughs> oh. to be hate comments, but they actually are really funny. Uh, and some of those <laughs> comments are fucking funny. I swear to God, people that that follow me, and when they go. When we go live, I swear to God, some of those comments are gold. Are gold. I'm like, how the fuck did you think about of this? Like some so insults, I, I laugh because when um, some people try to insult me, I'm like, that was actually a good insult. I'm actually going to steal that. <laughs> Consider that stolen. <laughs> no, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes they come through. And I'm like, I love you for that. Yeah. Sometimes. The funniest What's the insult? funniest? Oh, oh, I know. Oh, wow. Uh, um... I, <laughs> I know which one. Was my, my Which one was my favorite? My favorite, hands down. I, I did a TikTok. I told you about it. I did a yeah. TikTok about Bad Bunny. Oh. And, yeah. And then um, I said stupidly that he's not an icon. And then everybody in Puerto Rico was so upset at me. Uh, and like they got on, like people were stitching it on, on TikTok. It, it really went big, right? Yeah. And then somebody said, somebody left a comment and <laughs> and she said, okay, grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. I fucking love that person. I don't know who it was, but that made my day. It was so fucking funny. Honestly, She's just like, you must be old as shit. That's why you don't know anything. Exactly. About. But, but like they, 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 they made me do my research, and I did. So I'm a new uh, bad bunny stan. Uh, but it was hilarious. Like she lit. But it was like so short and yeah. sweet, and it hit the spot. It literally went like, okay, grandpa, and I'm like, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hilarious. What about you? Oh, for me, it's the the 
obvious. So people um, have said that basically I talk like I'm on drugs because of, <laughs> because <laughs> because <laughs> because I speak so slowly. So people get mad. They're like, "Why do you talk so slowly? I have to put the video on one point five x speed. You talk like you're on drugs." Like so many people say that it's so funny. <laughs> I love that. That's what upsets me. And it's actually it's it's funny. It's just funny as hell. Like people get so mad at how slowly I talk. It's just funny. I'm like, just put it on 1.5x speed. That's all you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that you walk that you talk slow. That you walk slowly. I I, I think, think I think I do. Like when I listen back to myself, when I read the comments, I'm like, do I talk slow? I actually kind of do, but I don't really. It's how I talk. I can't change it. I did. I never noticed yeah. that. Honestly, <laughs> never. But uh, let me find the the. I want to show it to the people. Uh, the... TikTok fashion versus Twitter fashion. I think people on Twitter are more knowledgeable, and I think it depends though because um, Twitter. yeah, I think I think it depends though because um, I'm new to TikTok, so yeah, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. Like what on TikTok, you... people try to like add like it goes back to the whole people want to show that they have knowledge on fashion. So I'll talk about something. And then people put their input. Like I was talking about Demna the other time. And I was literally talking about something to do with Demna's Balenciaga. And someone said, oh, yeah, by the way, you might not know, but Demna also had a brand called Vetmore. And I was like, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. I, I am shocked as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I am so surprised. Like, you learn something new every day. But I was like, I don't understand why that was necessary to comment because it was a video about Demna Balenciaga. But it's just that thing. But I think it's also because, like, TikTok is genuinely... I think I'm finding really good creators now, but at first it was very... Yeah. Like, like there's... I think that there's, like, maybe, like, really five good fashion creators on TikTok that I enjoy Mm. following. Honestly, you're not one of them yet, but uh, I'm kidding. Um, but there's a couple of them that uh, that like are really good. I think I still prefer Twitter. Yeah. The only reason because like Twitter is more interactive. Like there's more chances that like even if you ask a question, somebody's going to answer it. On TikTok, you can ask like what collection was the third picture from, and like that's just going to go mm-hmm. into the universe of comments, and you will never get your answer. Um, but by the same token, I think on Twitter it is easier to correct something if it's wrong. Right. You know, like um, on 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 TikTok, if you put it out, you put it out. You cannot fix it. Yeah. So, I prefer Twitter. So. Yeah, Twitter's cool. Twitter can be toxic. Yeah. But (laughs) it's funny toxic. It's funny toxic. Correct. And like, if you get on Twitter, like, you should not take a single thing seriously. Oh, yeah, definitely. At all. At all. Yeah. Yeah. Finn said TikTok fashion needs some work. I totally agree. It's just, yeah. It's Finn. It's, It's coming. It's coming. Finn is like awake. It's like four a.m. Why is Finn not in this chat? <laughs> I could send Finn. Finn the link if Finn wants to join. Finn, get your ass here. Finn is probably Finn. like relaxing in bed, comfortable. <laughs> I'm trying to find one picture. <laughs> oh, okay. So everybody, here we go. So this is the picture that I have in my phone. That I'm not, not ever deleting, and it's from IO. I'm never deleting this picture because, for some weird reason, <laughs> this picture brings me so much joy. So I turn on TikTok, and all I see is this. Oh yeah, the pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you love face. you love that picture with my face and the pineapple. It's it's the size of your head compared to the pineapple, to the, compared to the little mic that you have. You need to like you need to I like frame that. that picture. 
I, I, like this is one of my favorite pictures of all time. <laughs> Honestly, just because it's ridiculous. Yeah, Finn said he's in bed naked. <laughs> yes. By the way, that 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 guy was hilarious. The guy was obsessed with you in our live stream. Obsessed, Jasper. <laughs> yeah, Jasper. Who who is Jasper? <laughs> I, I don't I I, I, I thought remember. you knew who Jasper he, was. He, he, I, I, I talked to him but I do not know him personally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Jasper was like, Oh my god, you're cute. I only want to know what I has to say. I was like, damn <laughs> He's like, fuck everybody else, I will talk. <laughs> Oh, my my, my yeah. favorite people joining every live stream are the people that start the first comment. They're like, is Alessandro really leaving? Meanwhile, the name of the live stream is Alessandro Medicare. Okay, like, that leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I legit want to be like, no, we're just like, <laughs> just talking. No, I, I love it. Either way, I feel like it's, you know, you're always going to just have to keep of course. saying the same thing. Like, there's some questions I kid you not, I've answered a billion times. Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite designer? Auntie Benamista. Who's your favorite designer? Auntie Benamista. Who's is your it, favorite she, designer? Is she, Auntie is she really, she really is your favorite designer yeah, of yeah, all she time. Is. Well, it depends of all time. I mean, she's my favorite designer in terms of I think her aesthetic resonates to me personally okay. the most. But in terms of, I don't think she's the greatest designer of all time. Definitely not. Okay. Um, just me personally, like on a personal connection, I'd say she's my favorite designer. But um, yeah, she's certainly not the greatest designer of all time. The better designers yeah. than Anzi Vinamista for sure. <laughs> Next season will be wild, yeah. I didn't know it was confirmed. I thought it was a rumor <laughs> of clickbait. <laughs> no, oh, no, it's not clickbait. Um, Alessandro announced it on his Instagram page. Wait, he, he said that. Wait, let me go on his Instagram. I, did he just, like, post a statement? Yeah, basically. Uh, I'll give it... new Burberry, new Gucci, new Ferragam, kind of. Hopefully you get a better second season. Yeah. I loved his his debut. Yeah. Fashion, honestly. I think I it was more it. impressive that it wasn't, apparently, allegedly, it wasn't a complete collection. It wasn't the best, yeah. It wasn't even yeah. the best pieces. It literally wasn't a complete collection, which is why they're almost going to, like, cancel the show. It just occurred to me that I witnessed in person the last Alessandro for Gucci show. Bitch. I just realized that. Is he not going to like have a last hurrah show? Or is it literally he's so. gone effective immediately? I think it's effective immediately. They oh, would wow. mention they would mention it in a statement or something. Yeah. It would be cool for him to get, like, the last Hurrah show where everyone can just, like, cry. No, no, like... <laughs> no, then I'm not going to be there. <laughs> Let's stick to this. We're happy with this. It's like, no, I want to be at the last show. <laughs> no, no, I want to have something to tell my kids. Right? <laughs> kind of iconic. But you know what's even more, more, more iconic? The fact that the twins missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling them tomorrow and just be like, you know the last Alessandro McKelly for Gucci show? The one that you missed? The <laughs> one that was about twins? It's like me missing a show that is all about gay people. <laughs> Which is basically every show in town. <laughs> is Hannah and Alessandro's hotel home to comfort him after the news? <laughs> wow. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm over <laughs> designers not getting a last collection. It feels incomplete. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true, though. Yeah, I guess you don't get, like, the chapter doesn't close 
fittingly. It's just a bit abrupt. People are asking me how South Africa is. Um, well, South Africa was amazing. I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of cool people. Um, what I was actually doing there was I was filming a documentary with a brand, like a fashion documentary uh, for views. So that should come out on their YouTube channel whenever it comes out, probably sometime early next year. And then once that comes out, I can start posting like vlogs and clips from South Africa. I'm embargoed, which means I can't post about it until they post their thing because theirs always have to be first, you know. Big so... professional words over there. <laughs> what embargoed? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Phoebe to come back if the industry looks like this. <laughs> I don't blame you, honestly. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> if you see that, it's Hanan in Alessandro's hotel room to comfort him after the news. I don't know. Am I? I feel, I feel like Alessandro's hotel room would be so much more maximalist. Yeah, There would be, like, green walls and, like, a red ceiling. And, like, and like, a, pa- like a, a, a palm tree on the side. Literally. <laughs> swear to God. And I'm there being like, I don't know, maybe if we have some fun, I'm going to get a Gucci bag. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. So, um, and on, how has wobbling been going? <laughs> Why are you so? <laughs> Why are you so stupid? You should. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh should, God, that's funny. you should not mention that. I will never. What was the word actually? Wallop. Wallop. Okay, everybody in chat. Okay, have my back on this one. <laughs> what does the word wa- wallop? Yeah, wallop. Does anyone know what, what the word is... wallop means? Okay, uh, please in the chat <laughs> t- tell us what the word wallop wallop means. <laughs> Come on. To hit something. See, under stitches is from the UK though, so it makes sense. He would know. Okay. Oh, they actually know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Flog. To walk sloppy. Add beating. Oh, he took that back. Never mind. He said no. <laughs> He's not going to, this is not going to the universe. So, uh, okay, so question for everybody who said uh, something correct. Uh, Do you, in what context do you use that? (laughs) You shut up. up. In what context do you use that? (laughs) I'm I'm like, I'm going to get so much slack for this. I could already see it. So guys, in what context might you use wallet? In what context? I didn't want of you. I'm about to give him a wallop. But, but see, I, I think you're wrong. Wait, wait, let me let me get more people to is any or usually I think. Okay. It's an innocent word usually, I think. Joking okay. Mostly. Last. Okay. Last question. Would you ever ever use it in? Uh, you he walloped across the kitchen in a <laughs> Wait. A question. A question. The last question that I have for. See, nobody's mentioning it in the way that you're mentioning it. <laughs> okay. Last question for everybody. Does it does this word apply to any sexual connotation? Okay, it's a yes or no. Would you ever use it like in a sexual? Um... <laughs> Would you use it in a sexual context? Oh, Finn said totally. I don't think so. No. <gasps> Thank you, Understitch. 
Oh, okay. The offense said in a very sexual word, so no. It's a very se- a sexual word, so no. Exactly. Oh. So I... <laughs> no. I I love you guys. I love you. I want everybody's addresses. I'm sending everybody a, a food basket. Oh, and I won't tell you why. Because a wallopy might be hot for some. Okay, so I'm still winning. It's three to two. <laughs> so do you want to tell the story? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, <laughs> during Milan Fashion Week, we were um, <laughs> we were making fun of each other. We were like um, asking, like basically, when last did you have um, sex? And then we were like, oh, when last did you wallop? And then Hanan didn't know what wallop meant, and he didn't know how to pronounce it, so he started saying wobble. What? <laughs> so now, anytime I see Hanan, I'm like, have you wobbled? <laughs> and when I'm last like, did you wobble? <laughs> I, I I swear to God, I have a PTSD from that word, and now you guys proved it that I'm actually not <laughs> wrong because this does not have anything to do with anything sexual. <laughs> but I cannot get that word right. I swear to God. It's so funny. You yeah. It's oh, I you're using it like hit like that. Hit that one last G. Well, it's not really hit that because we're not referring to a specific person. We're just talking in general. Like genuinely, when wallop. last did you did you wallop? When last did you wallop? Uh, from the, or I'm when sorry. last did you wobble? Wallop. Wobble. <laughs> when last did you wobble? So for you the know. seventy people here, you're in on the inside joke. Exactly. So you'll know why you we can start join. laughing. You're more than you welcome. You can join in on on the exactly. banter. <laughs> He says, I've, I've literally never heard someone use it in that context. <laughs> Thank you. Neither have I understood that. Thank you. Oh, my God. So many of my friends use it in that context. I am so happy. <laughs> it's wobble time. <laughs> no, it's the wobble time. Is... <laughs> I am so happy right now. <laughs> like yes i'm right i know right oh it's my balenciaga script uh for tiktok that i'm getting death threats for okay let's <laughs> <laughs> i'm more likely to use it like when you wallop when you wallop a head around the head yeah i mean that is the like textbook like that's how you're supposed to use it to be fair i, I think know. me who, and my friends taught you this <laughs> We 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 reappropriated it re-appropriated. <laughs> to mean something else, <laughs> something uh, a bit more interesting. <laughs> oh, fin, fin, fin to Hello, smiling yeah, in are. the darkness. Well, he's going. He's he's going to support you on the wallop thing. On the walloping. <laughs> I just had to come in to tell you all, walloping is healthy. <laughs> One should always wallop. Um, you mean wobble? <laughs> you mean wobble? Is that... I've wobbled a few times. You know what I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> no, I only jumped in because I was like, oh, I can't sleep, so I thought it low. Girl. Well, hello yeah. there. I'm not turning on the light. Actually, I could, to be honest. Hold on. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Mm, yeah, give me a second. Um, Show us those bleached eyebrows, bitch. Cassie, so, well, Wobbling is healthy. healthy. You guys. Wobbling is healthy. You know where I picked up that word? And this this was one of the biggest cultural shocks in for like a, a, a European kid to, to come to America for the first time. They used to have this place in Colorado Springs that was very much straight, but it was kind of like country like yeah. country as hell and like a legit guys would come like in country hats like in like cowboy hats and like boots <laughs> like legit and everybody would like listen to music and everything but then there was that song 
do the wobble, do the wobble, do the wobble. <laughs> and that's when, like, all those, like, country kids would just, like, yeah. get a new, like, all of them would start dancing. And I'm like, when I heard that, I'm like, okay, this is my cue to leave. I need to, like, this is too much white people around me, I swear. It was so bad. That's funny. Like, it's too much, too many country people around me. They're going to yes. wobble on me. I, They're going to I'm do fine. the wobble. I'm fine. Do not wobble on me. It, that's a southern <laughs> song. You, have you ever heard it? Yeah, 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 I've heard it, definitely. But, like, in the middle of, like, a country club, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving the knit. Is that a rough CK? It is. Uh, it is. Represent. The opposite sleeve. I do love it. <laughs> Hold on. I'll put on my headphones so I don't wake the family. Where's your light? Do the wobble, do the wobble, do the wobble. He I do not. You one. better stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please stop. Do the wobble. <laughs> No, that I swear to God, when I heard that song, I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> it was so bad. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is not for me. <laughs> I'm like, can we play some Lady Gaga? What is he? I can see. What? 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 Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. You. Uh, he is with us. He went At from like four twenty. Do the wobble to. Can you play bad romance, please? <laughs> Alexa, like, do the wobble. From Katy Perry's prison, is that? <laughs> <laughs> they play that song at weddings. Oh Jesus Christ! I am so sorry. <laughs> well, do the oh. wobble. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole choreography, dude. There's a whole choreography. It's. Oh it's my like, God. Yeah, I do. I do think though that's a very local thing to say. I, uh, is it? I don't think. I don't think it's a very like yeah, country exactly. wide thing. Hmm. Probably. 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 Wallop. I don't know, but I think in, like as Brits, we can turn anything into a sexual act. That is true. <laughs> You probably have a lot of words for that. Too many, in fact. <laughs> uh, Finn is like, well, let's start with the letter A. I have... <laughs> true. True. Very, very true. Far too true. Hold on. I'm going to put some lip balm on, but it's over there. Okay, so the TikToks that I have to make... <laughs> I have a list of TikToks that I have to make. Make sure these ones that get you death threats. <laughs> well, that is a top priority. <laughs> Gosh. Do you, do you like, stack work. them up? What? Do you do, like, a certain amount of TikToks a day, or...? Oh, well, I try to do two or three. A day? Yeah. Uh, and I'm having... I have to do that till the end of the year, because I want to try to hit 70,000 by the end of the year. Um, couldn't be me, sis. Uh, it couldn't be me also, but I, it is. Oh, yeah. um, but um, I'm trying to do it like 70,000 by the end of the year, and I'm at 55. Okay, so it's, yeah, so it's, not, we'll it's completely doable. Yeah, we'll see. If it happens, just... happens. I mean, all this hate is getting me a couple more people following, so... <laughs> Look, bad publicity is better than no publicity. Hey, death threats are better than no death threats. <laughs> Sucks. Very true. I tried, I had some eyeliner on today and I still can't get it off and I look like I've been beaten up. Like you've been wobbled. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking Did I wish I'd been right? wobbled. Did I... Did I use that right? <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these, these, four, these four people are like waiting for us to talk about like uh, fashion, fashion and stuff, and we're like so <laughs> we're talking about wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> what is 
is the correct way of using uh, the word wobble. Can you use it in a sentence, please? <laughs> if I look at the spelling bee. Uh, <laughs> Canuk uh, said, did you already try me? Marcella what was... Uh... I cannot say Marcella water pen. Oh, yeah. I've just run out of my normal cleanser. I normally use it. I don't know. Nobody's interested in this. Um, I normally use a balm cleanser, and that takes off all makeup, and that's why my skin is always pretty clean. Um, Sponsor me. Yeah, please. <laughs> Sponsor me. Don't worry. I, we're, we're interested. I have a skincare routine. Yeah. Do you really? So, I, yeah, I yeah. I, I literally do. I don't Can have I, it. I'll have to give you, you know one, what? babes. I, you know what? I always say that, but I'm like, I'm like so lazy. I literally, the only thing that I do is like, um, in the morning when I wake up, I take a cube of ice and then I, um, I um, kind of like put ice all over my face. <laughs> <In space. laughs> yeah. Do you um, do you wear SPF? Uh, yes, here and there. Okay, that's good. If but I remember here and there. If I remember. It's best to wear every day, if you can. I know, but like, I live in Florida. Exactly. So here. Exactly, that's more of a reason to wear that. I know. Yeah. I, I, I wear it when I'm, when I'm at the pool, yeah. <laughs> I, I really do, I really do. Look, bear in mind I live in England and I'm as pale as Casper the Ghost, right? <laughs> I wear SPF 50 plus every day. Jesus Christ. Oh my, okay, that's extreme. I wear SPF 15 every day, but then again, I'm black as fuck, so... I was going to say, there's a bit of difference between the melanin. <laughs> so, I guess that You're, makes up for it. Dude, you are so tall. In person, when I saw you, I was shocked how tall you are. He is, isn't he? Honestly. That's crazy. <laughs> when I saw you at Dover Street, I was like, Jesus Christ, you're tall. You're tall as well. I thought I thought you were yeah. taller than I like imagined you to be. I was like, oh shit! Ev everybody's like, when they meet me, they're like, oh, because obviously I'm fat, and I'm like, but they're like, you you've got a big presence. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not built small, and I just happen to be fat. Wait, how tall are you? I'm six foot exactly. Yeah, because I was nice. like, oh shit, Finn's actually tall. And I think that day you were wearing shoes that added height as well yeah that tends to be a day, that it tends to be every day <laughs> yeah it's rarely a day goes by that i'm not wearing heels yeah <laughs> it's just fun do you know what i mean it scares the straights i mean that are not into fashion <laughs> no but i was must shocked. actually I be why. like shocked <laughs> well i think because i've just moved home so obviously i lived in manchester for seven years and um I've been home for two months now, and I feel like people have gotten used to my sort of antics. And it's getting, it's a bit boring when you go downtown and like, oh, can't wait to see what you're wearing this week. I was like, oh, fuck off. I know, I know. It sounds like we're like circus animals to people. Yeah. Well, no, do you know what's actually a joke? So it's not a joke, it's my life. I walked down to the local supermarket to buy some food, and... Um, People will stop their car and take pictures of me. That's a compliment. Oh, wow. That's a compliment. Yeah, but Hanan, it's not me. <laughs> wow. Babes, it's not even me dressing up. It's me in like trackies. Oh, well, it's not trackies. It's just a Miyaki trackies. It's just. <laughs> That's not just any type of. <laughs> yeah, it's not any type of trackies. Yeah, but if I wear like a skirt, which I do most of the time, and I don't know some tabby boots or something people literally stop in the like stop in the street i've had like really? guys in, yeah i've had guys in vans stop get out and up, like do a video of me and stuff yeah it's very weird what the fuck i don't know it's not, so even, it's not even me being extreme do you know what i mean um but then i guess you sort of get used to your own weirdness yeah i say this from experience <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. I got my first. I got my first like heels in Paris now, like any shoe with a heel. Have you got and your Balmains yet? Uh, I have oh, not yet. I'm not. Oh, I'm yeah. not getting. I'm not getting those. They're like five thousand dollars, bitch. Bitch, Olivier loves you. 
Yeah. I, well, if he sends them, I'll, I'll I'll be more than happy to wear them. Trust me. <laughs> uh, but they're so pretty. They're so fucking beautiful. I swear. You should buy some. I don't know if they sort of traveled over to the US, but new rocks. Yeah, new yeah, rocks. Well, yeah. so the, I, I got these. Um, but this these were a gift, and these are from that. Um, um, her name is Anya. Oh, cute. And uh, they're very comfortable, which I did not um, expect. Well, the, well, they look pretty but, flat. They're a bit like my Rick heels in the sense that they're pretty flat. Yeah, and they're 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 like they're a lot more comfortable because I think that Rick heels are a lot more narrow. These yeah. are far more wide. A lot so less ground you, contact. Exactly. So it gives you like a good base to walk. Hmm. So um, I'm going to be wearing these around Florida where women in their 80s are going to be getting a heart attack after seeing me. But... <laughs> I would wear heels, but I just feel like I'm already tall. I don't want to like, intimidate people. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. Who cares? You don't... <laughs> <laughs> I already intimidate people. I don't want to make it worse. <laughs> Look. No, you don't. Heels... Nah, you just might win a fight. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> People, see, I would say the weird thing about, the one thing I've noticed is the more flamboyant that I dress, not that I've ever dressed, quote unquote, normally, um, that people just don't fuck with me because I've got no hair. And I'm tall and I'm big. I'm like, let's have a fight then. Come on. <laughs> but you know what? That's their problem. That's the thing. Oh, and I know, what did you want from, did you want them to order in a size for you at Dover Street Market? Yeah, because they don't have my size, so like, um, especially like, you know the um, plus shorts that look like skirts, like yeah. in the way they're shaped, I love those, mm-hmm. but I can just get millions of pairs of those, but they never have my size, because they sell out quickly in store. What, wait, like, size or 34? Size, 36. 36. Yeah, I mean, I can, um, the problem is, right, there's two options you, you can do. You can hope and pray and ask them to put it on the order, or you can right. pre-order them. Right. But the thing with pre-order is you have to give them the full amount. You can't just wait till sale. Oh, yeah. I don't mind pre-ordering. Yeah, you can do If it's, like, that. confirmed, yeah. 100%. I, I do all my shopping through Dover Street Market now. Oh, great. Well, ish. Because just because I buy quite a lot of com these days. Yeah. For me, I'm more, I'm just a I'm plus person. Like the skirt shorts, the blazers, that's all mm-hmm. a bit of me. I, um, I'm going on Friday to pick up some stuff that I bought, which sounds quite entitled, but I am. <laughs> Because I was like, yeah, you you seem to be in Dover Street Market a lot. This is, I was like, do you have, like, a, you must do. Yeah, yeah. I know, I, literally, it's embarrassing. I walk <laughs> in, no, it is embarrassing. Like, bear in mind, I've been shopping there since I was 13. So, yeah. And I'm 25 now, so it's 12 years. And there's people there that I've known since I was 13. And I walk in and people go, oh, Finn's here. And then they put it in the WhatsApp, like, Finn's here. And I'm like, I'm actually going to kill myself because they, <laughs> they're expecting me to walk on the floor and talk to them. And I'm like, I don't work here, love. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best hats that I saw is like in Sweden, that blue hat that says, I don't work here. I got so mm. many DMs that said, like, where can I buy this? <laughs> you can actually buy it at Dover Street Market in the idea section. In I, There's an idea section? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh yeah, shopaholic. Need to stop doing, stop buying shit I don't need. <laughs> I really do. Finn can Finn can map out the receipt market in his head. I honestly could. <laughs> I'm. I remember not too long ago. I went before I went to the. Um, no, I went after the Michelle Lamy event that I went to, um, and I was in there. And there was a customer talking to 
to their family and I said oh it's completely the wrong size it's not going to fit you and they were like oh recommend one and I was like oh I'll just ask somebody to get it from the back and they were like well can't you do it and I was like no I don't work here love <laughs> um, but I was just like I and I and the problem is as well is that because I know the star sometimes people think I am the star and yeah. then I'm like mm, probably need to find a new hobby Oh my god. That's interesting though. What um what com do you like most? Mainline? Mm. It varies season on season, I think as well, because I mean it's like with com it's really hard because I I think to look at mainline. Yeah. Right. Would love I like I love it. I love the runways. But in terms of the commercial collection. Like, I have to try it on. Yeah. So for me to pre-order it, it's really hard. Um, because some fabrics won't stretch. Like, this season, I pre-ordered yeah. stuff. That's just gone. And, um, like, the, all the stuff I pre-ordered didn't fit, just because of the fabric. Oh, shit. So I ended up getting, like, credit note, and then I bought other stuff in the end. Mm -hmm. So, but I think Noir is actually my favourite to buy. Ah. I think it's really underrated and I think it's and it I think fits it's and it fits damn I've never considered no I just thought it wouldn't fit well you're slimmer than I am and I, you'd fit a lot more than me hmm. and I can fit into I can fit into every line if anything um on plus is the hardest line for me to fit into yeah because I've got a 40 44 inch chest but I've also got a 40 40 inch waist Hmm. So I can't really buy lots of it. Yeah, I just know like the sizes in store are never my size. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard because then they argue, "Oh, we don't have the clientele for it," and I'm like, "No, the clientele just doesn't shop because they don't think it's there." Exactly. <laughs> yeah, most of the argument I made to them quite a few times, and then they started like, I mean, I am talking from like a level of privilege because obviously. I do buy stuff, so I can sort of say, well, put one in the order that's going to fit me, you know? Yeah. Um, and it that it started to help a lot more, because I do, you know, if the size is there and I like it, I'm going to buy it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Do you get, like, discount for working in the industry? With certain brands, yeah. Like Rick Owens, Yoji... Oh, really? Uh, return to it. Yeah. Work. <laughs> it work. Yeah, I get I get thirty percent off any Rick, really. Um, now you're talking my language. That's probably why <laughs> I have so much Rick. <laughs> that's probably why I have so much Rick. Um, thirty percent off EOG as well. Uh, thirty percent off Isabel Benanato. Um, I have to think of the other brands, but yeah, I can't remember right now. Do you? This is might be intrusive, so I don't don't have to reply. Um, but do you do that through like a work portal, or do you just reach out to the brand? No, I, I reach out. I have a representative that I talk to from the brands. Yeah, nice. So nice. they ask me like after every collection, I'll be like, "Oh, is there anything you want?" from this like collection you could put in an order basically it's um do you know angelo um the writer what's his last yeah. name yeah 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 i know who you're talking yeah. about yeah um so i talked to him quite a lot um and he gets given a piece every season from isimiyaki oh shit oh, wow. yeah I'm, I'm not on yeah. that level <laughs> but but he was talking about his discounts and stuff okay yeah, yeah. and um he's like he the same thing sort of happens to him where they'll go is there anything you want to pre-order and he's like well i don't really know yeah mm, but he, all, he, I mean, he always does buy stuff because he's always like look what i got <laughs> and i'm like good for you bitch <laughs> it's always weird because it's like um like i got asked two days ago by rick like rick team and i was like I don't know. Like, I, th I, don't, I haven't thought about it. 
Like Wait, I'm what tributary you need to, to the right. Um, basically, if there's anything I want to order from the collection, go on. Do you want me to give you the buy book the, with all the pieces? That would help. I'll give it to you later. Like, yeah, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. I literally don't. Message me tomorrow, and I'll give it to you. Definitely. Because um, and the prices aren't too um, well. No, the prices are bad. They but... are. <laughs> They're slightly better for with the discount, but still not great. No. I tried um, when I was in New York in um, the Rick store. No, in the Dove Street Market store actually. Um, I tried. They had like a limited edition um, dress, but it's yeah. a men's. It's a men's dress that last last couple of looks of the men's collection. Um, and they had like a pre collection exclusive to them that came really early i'd buy one of those like for you i would buy one right. because it's it's versatile you wear, you have to wear it with trousers anyway so you can kind of play around with it all right i'll find a picture nice. i'm waiting for a more time to the the weather in florida to um to get colder so i can wear my coat i got that <laughs> I got that Drew Kapoor coat, which I am obsessed with. I'll show it to you. It is so beautiful. I can. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, I remember when you got that. It is so damn cute. Honestly, I don't know how the camera works. <laughs> Finn so pissed. He's like, "Good for you." <laughs> no, Finn doesn't like it. That's the thing. <laughs> Does he not? I don't I like it, it, but yeah, it's, it's not his style. <laughs> It's not his style, but it moves. I love it though. I mean, I, I can't be in, involved in this conversation. All I wear is black for the most part. <laughs> I mean, same girl. I've only started wearing colour in the last year. Mm, that's a lie. I, I'm wearing more colour. No, I mean, I... red now for me is really out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Wait, by the way, uh, stand up. I want to see what... So even on my live, somebody it's, asked... What's it's the... Sanjeev's thing. It's the Tamil... Oh yeah, Jamie said. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. And um, I've got meetings in the morning and I can't be bothered. Yeah, what? You're up at almost five and you have meetings in the morning. Oh my god. I'm not I'm not a great sleeper as it is. But um it's not until eleven, so so. Ah, you've still got time. Get Um, five hours in. Yeah, exactly. And then I can wake up just before it and be like, hello. <laughs> Do you want me to talk you through your finances? <laughs> it's not even, I don't even talk through their finance, finances, to be fair. It's, tech, it's more tech than finance. But it's, um, yeah, it'd be fun. It's, do you know what as well? It's not. It's not this client, but I've noticed yeah. with Bre- with Brexit, a lot more clients have like Cayman Islands entities, and that's where they actually do their accounting, yeah. <laughs> or oh, wow. Bermuda. And I'm like, oh, nice, no tax. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. Must be nice for some. You're, you're like, good for you. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, literally. Yeah. But definitely since Brexit, it's been like a lot more companies do it. I mean, they have to, because the UK is about to fucking fuck us with tax. I know. I can't wait to earn less money. 25% corporate. Like, I'm like, are you joking? I know. 19 Um, to 25. And they're dropping the rate, aren't they? The the parameters. Yeah. The bracket, sorry, that's the word. Um, Because my friend just opened a bar and she was like, I opened it to earn more money, not to earn less. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, babes, it's not like you're not earning 40 grand a week with the bar being open. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm, going through, I'm going through my book. I want to see like what I can use. What, for your TikTok? Yep. I love <laughs> I how don't... detailed your TikTok scripts are. I need to I, adopt some of that. Literally, one of these post-it notes literally says, 
gays take over fashion. True. I that is my... that that's already happened a long, long yeah. time ago. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did, but it's talking about like Yves Saint Laurent and then like his team. I guess that everybody's everybody yeah. was gay. I loved in that um what was that new show called that was on um the fuck me the one about like john galliano and oh the kingdom of dreams yeah i loved it when um isan Laurent was speaking about eddie's first collection and it was like i wish i had sold it to elvia nature rather than to caring and they've <laughs> ruined my brand and all this sort of stuff and i was like jesus christ you little fag but you, but uh, what was the what, what was that whole thing with uh, I guess when Tom Ford took over Saint Laurent, that like he gave him that Yves Saint Laurent called him super upset at him and started yelling at him and saying, like, you ruined everything that I worked <laughs> for for 40 years. He said, you ruined it in three minutes, something like that. Like, he was like a legit pissed off. Yeah, no, he was. He was like, yeah. what have I done? It's crazy. Uh, but to be fair, found... I... go Sorry, on. go for it. Go for no, it. Go on. Well, we're not going to continue this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> um, I actually like Tom Ford's YSL more than I liked his Gucci. But... No way. Whoa. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. But then I quite, I even liked Albert Arbaz's YSL. Ah, oh, I love his one one. I miss it a lot more so much. Yeah, it was good. Honestly. But I was reading here uh, in, in, in the book, which I never, I would never guess this. It says that the first uh, competition that Saint Laurent ever thought he had was Kenzo. Mm. Yeah. Kenzo. Um, yeah, so it says here. I thought it, it says, was Carl. <laughs> so so it says um, just because like Kenzo came like in like in something that is completely different from like what Saint Laurent was doing, like very French type of a thing. Um, he said Kenzo was the first competition Yves Saint Laurent had in years. They greatly admired each other. Kenzo really invented the laid back look. His stuffy. Uh, his stuff was not so proper, which I could see. Um, yeah. No. What do you think like of Nigo's Kenzo? Huh. I think that it didn't uh, perform as well as they expected it. You know, yeah, I really? think that they had, I, I, I don't know about like sales wise, but I think that, like nobody's talking about it right now. Yeah. You know, like there is no impact, I think, at all. Even it though definitely... he had like some big, t- big time people, like um, like Kanye was there, Julia was there, um, mm-hmm. Pharrell was there. Like he had celebrities there. It's just like I don't think that the collection stuck with the public mm-hmm. at all. What did you think? Not a bad I... collection, though. Oh, Kenzo. It just looks like um, a more sophisticated version of what's that brand he has with Pharrell again? Um, Babe. No. <laughs> no. Human made? Right. Mm. Yeah. It looks like a sophisticated version of human made. Like if Pharrell and Nigo were given more money to make a more sophisticated collection. It's not. I'm never really going to look at any of his Kenzo um, collections and be wowed, which also I don't think is the point. I don't think they really were looking for him to do that anyway. I think they wanted him to make something commercial that will sell. And that's um, okay. I think I think people sometimes... Um, I think we're in a weird position in fashion where if... Um, if you're not a conglomerate, if you're not like a Gucci or a Balenciaga, yeah. you know, their selling is not a dirty word. But right. if if you're sort of a mid-level brand, like a Rick Owens or whatever, or a Kenzo, because I guess they probably have some of the turnover, um, in, you know, selling is almost a dirty word. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they do have to sell. 
Yeah. Um, and I think some brands are just like, you look at, I mean, Calvin Klein's not a very good example because you made, he sort of pioneered minimalism, didn't he, in the 80s and 90s. But, um, you know, the one thing the Americans are really, really good at is that they balance creativity with, with selling quite well, you know, right. commerciality. And I think maybe the Europeans are not as forthright with that sort of sentiment. I don't know. You, you, you know what? Like, I like, um, what, what was the name of the designer? Is it Olivier? Uh, Olivier? Or for, what was the designer of Kenzo before Nigo? Olivier? Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. I liked his stuff. That's right. And I, th- and I think the like presentation of like his clothes was very good. He had this during COVID. He had this beautiful um, video of like people just like dancing in the middle of a dance floor, um, just like to show off, um, kind of like the clothes and flow of the clothes. And it was very much kind of like focused on flowers, which makes sense. Uh, but I yeah. think. I think what people want is like you know like Kenzo from like 2014 with the with the tiger and you know huge please. letters that say Oh Kenzo. please no. Oh that's please what want. no. What? Please no. Dude that was the it shirt. That was the <laughs> shirt that like please people no. Love. People love that shirt. I'm sorry. That Kenzo chat was the most hideous thing. I don't even say things are hideous, but oh my God, that was hideous. <laughs> oh my God, that was hideous. <laughs> Dude, people people ate that shit up. They really did. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, I think the Finn doesn't even want to comment on that shirt. That's why he left. I was never... no, I'm not. Sorry, I was answering a DM. Um... Girl, no, I hate... you know that was a grinder message. <laughs> Not in this village, girl. <laughs> it's normally like my neighbor's cousins. <laughs> yeah. Someone said that Kenzo was for scammers and kids. <laughs> but nobody can deny that it was it sold <laughs> like crazy. It did sell, but I don't know it's why sad. people were buying. It was just the most hideous looking thing I've ever. I'm sorry. That shirt, and then you have uh, We Should All Be Feminist. That shirt sells like hot, so, hot cakes. Um, then Gucci's uh, Common Sense. Uh, what was that? Isn't... It, it, it's in uh, Common Sense. It's no Common Sense or something like that. I, I That shirt also sold like, it's, you know, like just to have like a good shirt. Actually, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. I think also it comes to the accessibility things, doesn't it? Like, you know, a brand can sell a a thousand or a million hoodies, but they can't sell a million platform heels. Sure. You know, and and if it has the logo on it, even better, because it means they've got that social cachet to be able to say to their friends, like, look at this Kenzo I got from Selfridges or from Bergdorf's or whatever. Mm, I think it says a lot about society. Um, and it's five o'clock nearly, so I probably should stop talking. You know no, no, you know that song by Lily Allen? It's five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Comes yeah. I always, whenever, whenever it's five o'clock, I... I I'm thinking of bowling. L- listen think about to Lily going fans. to bed soon. <laughs> Stick up to your bedroom. Oh my god, we're like Spice Girls, but but like minus two. Do what? Oh, come through. <laughs> what? Vocals. Kenzo, Kenzo Tiger is the bogle of high fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, common sense is not that common. I love that shirt. That was such a cold shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> no need to apologize. Okay. I can judge you, but you don't need to apologize. <laughs> is that? Sometimes I don't realize how bitchy I sound. No, but like when no. somebody knows you, like we we know that like it comes from love. Yeah, yeah I don't hate anyone. I hope. <laughs> I mean, you're jokingly bitchy. I mean, there's a difference between that and people who are genuine pricks that you want to literally throw off a bridge. Hmm. 
most people I know, to be honest. <laughs> such a I don't know if you get this Io and Hanan actually I feel like a um extroverted introvert like after a while I just can't talk to people and might stop talking to me um uh, not necessarily the only time that to be honest it's not uh, the only time that that happens to me is during fashion week mm, so during I fashion bet. week I do I do have a ritual that like after the day I go to my room and I just like stare at the wall Be because because during the day you get so exhausted from talking to people and it's always somebody around you and you always have to make conversation and you know you have to talk to the PR you have to talk to, you have, it, the, it, it's constantly talk 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 that like I literally want to like sit down and not hear anybody honestly that's yeah, the only sure. time but other than that i'm not i'm like i mean i'm on live stream with this asshole for like 15 years. <laughs> but um but yeah what about you ayo i think i'm just an introvert and i have a tap and i can turn on being sociable and then it runs out eventually and then <laughs> at that point yeah i can't do anything anymore because I'll definitely say I'm introverted, but I don't come across that way because I can turn it on if You're I not. need to. I think that's probably similar to me, to be fair. Yeah. I'm not an I mean, introvert. I mean, like, not that much. <laughs> no, I don't think you're an introvert, babe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely not. No. I, but then I think people think I'm an extrovert because I just wear what I want and don't really care. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? When actually that is kind of extroverted in a way because you're like sort of attracting attention to yourself. Like people who are very introverted don't want any attention coming their mm -hmm. way. No. Meanwhile, meanwhile, he's having spikes out of his. <laughs> True. Do you know what somebody? So obviously, once again, it brings it back to like moving home. Um, but my friend was like, "Do you?" do this for attention and i was like what in a tiny town like <laughs> yes. do you think i do this for attention i was like honestly i just put on what i own do you know what i mean like i just bought the yeah. clothes i have and um she was like but you must do it because you know when you step into a room people look at you and i was like when you're a freak as a kid <laughs> you sort of forget about that yeah and then do you know what i mean and then when you get into being an adult, you're like, oh, this is normal, but it's actually not normal. Do you know what I mean? And then, I don't know, it doesn't matter. This is why I need to move to London. Wait, where are you right now? In Oxford, Shear. Oh, gosh, yeah. I can imagine people giving you looks in Oxford, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I, you know, my first taste outside of London was like a culture shock, and it wasn't even far, it was Kent. It was fucking Kent. Oh, I didn't like see. <laughs> it was actually Sandwich in Kent. Mm. Sandwich, it's called. It's right beside like Ramsgate. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's called, that, it's that called area. Sa it's called Sandwich. Yeah, it's a town like called sandwich? Sandwich. Yeah, like sandwiches that you eat. Yeah. Like, Britta, like, come on. <laughs> come on. We cannot come up with, like, some <laughs> Pete's Town or shit like that. Like, sandwich? Jesus I Christ. I mean, where I live is called, well, I don't really care that people know, because they're not going to come here, is um, Burford. So it's kind of a made-up name. It's not, well, actually. That's, but but that's, that makes more sense than, like, Sandwich. <laughs> Who There's a place in Manchester name? called Sandbatch as well. Oh, God. <laughs> Why Us are y'all like this? I got... Who knows? Yeah. Sandwiches might have been invented in sandwich. You never know. Mm. Why, why can you not be like Americans and just steal other cities? Like, for example, there's Paris, <laughs> Texas. There's Athens in oh, Georgia, New Mexico. I think. Yeah, it's like, it's that, I don't know, but like, New Mexico, New York. 
I, I would love New Yorkers to go to York. Just, <laughs> just... He would not like it. No, I, I think they would get a few looks there. <laughs> a little, like, it's literally a tiny town. It's mad. I've never been to um, anywhere besides London. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> You know, because like growing up in London, right, you you see stats that like black people make up 3% and I just didn't believe it because I was like, that is not, it doesn't seem, in London, I'm looking around and I see English people and I see Latino people and I see black people and I see Asians. So I didn't get it. And then I went to Sandwich for school. (laughs) And oh my God, I was the only person that wasn't white English. And I was like, oh shit. And all no. of them were like, yeah, you're the first black person I've met. And I'm like, London is a one hour train away. That's and I'm the first black person you've met. And then I was like, oh, now I understand why most of England is racist. It makes sense. Yeah. Everywhere is just white as fuck. <laughs> there was crazy. There was 10 students in a school of a thousand um, that weren't white. That, so I'm that could, surprised. Oh, in my school, me. zero, zero. Yeah. Everybody, everybody was white and 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 <laughs> Croatian. Everybody. Yeah, honestly. But but of a population of like seven million, seventy million. Sorry, yeah. it is wild. Do you know what I mean? Um, but no, you're right. I know. Like you go into London, and especially if you grew up in London, you would assume everywhere's like London. Yeah. And then but I have to say though, just to give England some respect on its name, <laughs> you know, like there there are nice parts of England that outside of London. Well Manchester's know. nice. Leeds. Yeah, I love um, Manchester obviously because I live there. I lived in Leeds. Leeds is nice. Um, Did you live in Leeds? Yeah. I went to uni there. Oh no way. Um where else? I'm not I'm not sold on Birmingham. I'm not sold yet. No, no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sold on Birmingham. They're they're trying to push that they're pushing that agenda <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> no. It's it I, every time I go I'm like, this is a bomb site. What is the point? <laughs> nah, can't be dealing with it. L- like I love Manchester. I think Manchester's really the second city. Yeah, I agree. That's about it. No, I like Oxford as well. But I like it for more because it's where I grew up. I like Cambridge. It's quite mellow, serene. But it's like very, Oxford. It is very white. It's very it's posh very and white. White. Very white. The people that are, are from Cambridge, they talk like this. And uh, you know, some of them even went to uh, Cambridge University and they never left. Um, yeah. So it's you talk. You talk very slow for a guy who is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. How do I speak? I don't even know. Just normal, really. I don't know. Exactly. I try and. I think I um got rid of the poshness when I left. <laughs> Was that deliberate? Oh my god! Definitely. <laughs> I remember, I remember going into uni, like first, first year, and I was in a. Um, obviously, you're in halls, aren't you, for your first year or yeah. dorms? And um, people were like, "Oh, where are you from?" And I was like, "Oxford." And they were like, "Oh, you dirty southerner!" <laughs> and I was like, "You must, you must vote Tory." <laughs> and I, I was like, "Okay, then. I guess I won't talk like that anymore." Um, when actually, yeah, which is true. I mean, David Cameron was our local PM. Uh, MP. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Which is mad. Says but a lot. Yeah. Mm, says a lot about the area, doesn't it? <laughs> I lot. mean, the UK votes Tory, so. Yeah, no well. Do you know what's what? And then I'm going to go to bed because I do realise it's 5 a.m. Um, you mean it's 5 o'clock oh. in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching um, I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, right? And then... Don't say about Hancock. Well, that twat, right? And 
I've been reading the comments on different tabloids, right, about it because they report on it because obviously it's a daily event. And um, you should see the comment sections and it shows how polarised the UK is at the moment. Interesting. I haven't had a look at that. I'll have a look. I'm because sorry, Dan, like, but oh, one of my, about the UK, the best thing about UK, hands down, is was your was your forty four day or prime minister? Oh, God. and especially just, just especially don't. Especially, don't. especially that meme when she goes, she's like, "I am a spider." Uh, I'm gonna, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> did you did I you know we that. import seventy five percent of our brie? Uh, yes, we did because it's French. <laughs> <laughs> How she it's became like, a prime minister, I'll never flipping know. I just what I'll happens when you don't know. have a general election, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I will on never that know. But you know, the Republicans have taken over the house. So, <laughs> wait, are they? Are, is like your government now like full of Republicans? No, no, no. no, I was I was just trying to divert it onto American <laughs> oh, politics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't vote there, can you? Because you're not American. Well, technically. Yeah, I cannot yet. Yeah, I, I, I cannot yet. I cannot yet. Um, but, I mean, I mean, politics leader is legit crazy. I swear to God. I don't think that, like, it's nowhere it's like this. I, Apparently I swear. Trump is coming back. He's running again. Good for him. You, I didn't know if you go to prison in America, you can never vote ever again. Mm. Yeah. Well I, th- well, I think that they're trying to get um get that um overturned because that's not fair. Like you, you cannot take somebody's. Yeah, but it it goes into the racist fucking constitution, doesn't it? It's yeah. like if you're in prison, you lose rights, and then also if you've been um jailed, then you can't vote. So let's just put all the black people in the prisons. Now their rights are gone. So it's not right. slavery, but it is. And then when they come out, they can't vote. Yeah. No. That's very just... literally how their system <laughs> was built. No, Amer- America does not make any sense. I mean, like, look at their, like, Second Amendment and, like, fucking their guns. Like, we had, there was another shooting today in, in Walmart in, yeah. who knows, like, Virginia? I don't know, somewhere else. Like, what the hell? Oh yeah, would you agree that, um, so I, basically, I have to explain context as a white man. Um, <laughs> white. Um, so I stumble upon black Twitter quite a lot. Yeah. Um, because, I don't know, I just find some of that humour is quite funny. And um, this Nigerian woman made a TikTok and she was like, oh, in the UK, there's no black culture. There's only, we have our culture of where we came from. Yeah. And because of Americans, obviously enslavement, uh, slavery, uh-huh. they created black culture because they don't know where they're from. Yeah. Do you think that's true? So like, cause obviously you're Nigerian and you would be like, you would say I'm like British Nigerian. Yeah. Do you think that's like true? That we don't have black culture, we have like Nigerian culture or Jamaican culture or- Right, no, that's 100% true. Because in the UK, we, yeah, there's no such thing as black culture. We have, um, like, dancehall things, and that's more like the Caribbeans. And we have, like, African culture, which is really... I think it also comes from, like, a lot of um, black people in the UK. Their parents are, like, first or second gen, so they're very... They're not far removed from um, their culture. So, yeah, so really our culture is really just, like, where we're from, really. Roots, um, darling, roots, boyakasha. <laughs> but it is, I think, American black culture influences the world, though. It's, like, so influential, um, especially in, like, music, fashion, that sort of stuff, like, entertainment. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but, yeah we, yeah, we don't actually have black culture. It is That is very true. Not in the UK. Just thought it was interesting because I just didn't think of it that way. Oh yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely true. But it's like I wouldn't, I would never say, "Oh, I know a black man." I tell you, like, "Oh, my ex is Nigerian." It just so happens to be black. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go to sleep because I've got a meeting at eleven o'clock. 
And you get your five so hours in. So, so when are you going to wake up? 10.30. Oh, so you just like get up and like go to work? Yeah, I mean, I work from home, so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I will um, happily lay in bed until I have to answer an email. <laughs> I still like, even when I wake up, even if I have to do something, like, I need an hour to to, to come back to, to life. An right? hour? To wow, back. you're good. I need, like, two. Oh, really? Mm. Jesus like, Christ. I need to wake up a couple of times, too. Like, alarm, wake oh. up, fall asleep, wake yeah, up. I have, yeah. like, seven alarms yeah. on. You guys are crazy. My my mum gets so upset with me. She was like, she always goes, why can I hear your alarm all day? <laughs> and I'm like, because it takes three of them before I even wake up. No way. That is yeah, and crazy. I, have, I started doing different sounds for them so my body doesn't get used to it. Oh, wow. For, for me, like, it takes one. It, I it wish I one. could do that. It takes one, and I'm going to shut it off in the first five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. This is why even, I'm fat, though, don't I mean? <laughs> even, even, even now, even now when I got, like, you know, like, I, I caught myself a couple of times when I have a flight early in the morning, and I still didn't get a lot of sleep, my brain is just, like, not going to go to sleep. Yeah. And I'm going to wake up on my own. I'm like, that is... Not healthy. So, Good for you, sis. Yeah, I know. Like that's like one of those days where I, where where I feel like I'm like, you are responsible. Yeah, but then I like, sometimes give me have to minutes. remind myself that I'm an adult. <laughs> I, I I I hate that feeling. I hate the feeling of obligation that I have to do something. Yeah, like paying taxes. Who saw that? Like, no, <laughs> loser. And my dad was like, "You're gonna save. You're gonna save for a mortgage." And I thought, "Am I fat?" <laughs> yeah, but hey, dad, you don't know my dreams. I want to marry rich. <laughs> Those are my plans, dad. Right, I'm off. Okay, bye, Finny. Bye. bye. Goodbye. Bye. What an asshole. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, we spoke about everything except that. Yeah, literally. Um, Sanka, are you based in the U.S.? Because then I can understand why you'd say that if you're based in the U.S. U.S.A. U.S.A. <laughs> U.S.A. Every time I, I hear, like, Americans that, like, like guns and stuff, I just imagine, like, they, they go around chanting, U.S.A. U.S.A. No, usually, if they like guns that much, they usually are. <laughs> But the, in the US, though, you can't... It, I don't think the gun problem... It's literally impossible to fix, like, when you think about it. Because I've been speaking to people about it. Like, in the UK, to get a gun, the process is so complicated. Even oh, just to get a gun that. license. It's so complicated that almost no one has a gun. And the people that do say that something happens and they, they want, like, all the guns back, they can get it back in like a flash from everyone it, because I every gun that. is accounted for and what they're going to do is you have one year to return your gun or it now becomes a 10 year like prison sentence and everyone's like yep we're going to return our guns no. <laughs> so they do stuff I... like that so they're fully in control at all times of where the guns are who has guns apart from obviously the few illegal mm. ones that like I love that. criminals have but in America, it's too far gone because there's guns everywhere, all over the place. You can't even account for it. Dude, they have gun fairs. <laughs> Legit, you're driving down the street and you see a huge sign. It says gun fairs uh, Latoya yeah. Park on October 17th. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah. It is so sad, honestly. Someone said in the USA they hand up guns like candy on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's it's too far gone. It it's is. absolutely impossible to get rid of guns in the US. It's like not you even. You know what? You know what? Waste they of time. Can. They, they they can if they wanted to. 
How? How they get to every single gun if they oh, ban guns? How? Me, it's, Amer- it's, it's America. America will find a way when America needs to find a way. Trust really? me. Honestly. Americans are very much... Um, you know what? The, the thing about America that irritates me is the fact that like America does have... As much as I criticize this country, America does have a lot of potential. Honestly, America could be such an, such a good place. Right. But they have a couple of laws that are just fucking it up for everybody. Honestly, you know, like sec- their 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 um their defense for like Second Amendment is like, you know, well, it's my right to have a gun. Uh, girl, this uh, this uh, this was made like back in yeah. like in in fucking seventeen hundreds. You know these laws. Like, are you telling me that your say your life is so endangered? Like you're back in no it's ridiculous it's ridiculous because even um like in the u.s i know the police are really like jittery because people have guns yeah. which is why like they're always quick to shoot because they're just scared that someone else might pull out a gun and shoot at them and kill them yeah whereas in the uk most of the police don't need to carry a gun because nine times out of ten wherever they're going yeah. no one's going to have a gun anyway yeah so that then arrest becomes safer. People don't die. Like, they're not shot when they could have just been arrested. So, like, oh, but, human but, rights but, are just a lot better. But then on, on top of it, I'll talk about, like, the police here. The police here are, like, you, 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 it is so... I, I was looking at, like, the training and the stuff that they have to do. You can very easily become a police officer here, which is not good. Really? Yeah. That's terrible. Which is not good. <laughs> which is not good. That's why you have like the guy who killed um, uh, George Floyd, for example. You know, right. like the man. The man is a Nazi. Yeah. The man is like you know, like he is. And then like you have a lot of these guys, like Proud Boys and stuff like that. They're just like. So you reckon people officers. just join the police just to like? It's gi- It's giving yeah. them like an alibi, pretty much, to right. you know, to to bully and if they have to like kill people my god right. it's 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 ridiculous it, the, becoming a cop in america is uh, is a piece of cake that's crazy it's so sad honestly because over here it's, it's not easy to one be a cop and two like i've never had fear of police ever in the uk ever they do some dodgy stuff where it's like eh, you're profiling me but whatever but then um, yeah in terms of like fear of police, never really. I mean, I'm yeah. not a criminal, so why'd I be scared of police? Worst case <laughs> scenario is like they're going to be like, oh, let's like check this thing. And I'll be like, okay. And then the, they'll be done in like 10 seconds because they'll find out nothing happened. Yeah. Sure. Well, Understood said this chat took a different path. So the police uh, inspiration <laughs> for the collection of. <laughs> Was there now? I'm thinking uh, now. I'm thinking like, was there what collection was inspired? Could be inspired by police. Yeah. Hmm. I said, um, I'm a black American. I don't fear police. That's cool because I the narrative we hear here is that in America, like the police are just like trigger happy. In America, like police in oh. America, just want to fucking shoot their guns. Oh, in America, in America, they don't like you know like shoot to stop. They literally are like they do not care. They do not care. Like if you're running, they're not going to shoot for. Oh, they clearly shoot. don't because if you're running, they're supposed to shoot your leg once, exactly, and then arrest like, you. And then the news report comes out, and it's like they were shot twenty times. It's like what? Is that <laughs> what? What? Why? Why? Exactly. 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 Isn't Moody for one to work for Winter 14 Americans by Basio Police in the US? I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. Okay, uh, now I'm curious, like, what other shows were inspired by police? <laughs> he said. <laughs> But this is normal. You can't fear what is normal. <laughs> 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 they shoot first, ask questions later. That is insane. Sure. That's ridiculous. That is crazy. It's ridiculous, honestly. 
I'm sure it's it's worse in certain areas because like I've been to America so many times at this point, probably like ten times, and I've never seen any like people have issues with the police. So I feel like it might be certain states where they're a bit more like in LA I don't really see or like New York, I don't really see like crazy stuff happening. Um I think in New York you still have like, like a lot of crazy stuff, but I think really? that I think I think you do. I think you do. Even though I think that um, the crime in New York, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, they had a, a huge crime back like in the beginning of 2000s, but then uh, that drastically went down because of their their uh, their mayor and stuff. But now yeah. it's like back up, I think. But you still have like crazy stuff in New York going on. Definitely. Oh. But they need like a pol- police reform here, like ASAP. ASAP. Yeah, police are invented to hunt black slaves. Yeah, I've heard about yeah. that. Yeah, American history is scary. <laughs> Every time I hear about American history, I'm just like, oh my God, that place is. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Is it possible that you can create a group on WhatsApp? I mean, I definitely could. The only issue is that uh, on WhatsApp, you can kind of send anything, and I do not want to be involved in a group chat where <laughs> some dodgy shit is sent, and the next thing, my name gets screenshotted. Yeah, true. And then That's they're weird. like, I is a creep. I is endorsing <laughs> nudes or whatever the fuck. You're not? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? And then Christian wants to know when you're starting your YouTube channel. The people are waiting. Well, my YouTube channel is going to be about police reform. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm going to I'm going to start it by the end of this month. What wait, what is the today is the twenty fourth. Okay, beginning of next month. <laughs> oh my God. No, I think by the end of this month. I'm going to post it on my Instagram. Uh, and then Io is going to share it on his Instagram also. Uh, you okay? So I am Io. I am hunting you. I'm hunting Tuba. All of y'all have to reshare the fact that I'm making YouTube. Just so you know, <laughs> and that's a bullshit post. Just yeah. it has to be like a, a story on Instagram <laughs> that is like you want to see something amazing. You want to learn about fashion. <laughs> Exactly. But it's going to come soon. I think by the end of this month. People are waiting. The people are waiting. I know, right? <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Lower those expectations. <laughs> like, I or is a wallop. <laughs> <laughs> a wobbler. A wobbler. A wobbler. <laughs> wobbler. A wobbler. What are people saying? It's a lot of places in the show. Oh, Galliani for Dior did police. Any police references? Like, didn't, didn't he do like the police references in like, I think it was like Couture 2000? Yeah. I think that there was like, a, there was a police reference there. I think it was. Okay, dude. Until when are you going to go live? Well, I'm about to head out now, actually. Yeah, me too. It's it's midnight here, and I don't know why. Yeah. I'm still on Croatia time, dude. <laughs> I am still on Croatia time. That's why I'm, like, sleepy <laughs> as hell. Yeah. But I thank don't... you to uh, all the 55 people that are still here who listen to us ramble and yeah. talk about random stuff that is not why you actually tuned into the live stream. <laughs> I, swear. I don't know. I don't know how these, like, <laughs> live streams go anymore just because like we start talking about fashion and somebody gives like hints at something else and we end up like talking about like polar ice caps melting but yeah thanks so much this is actually fun um i'll try to do another one sometime soon well and... give us more uh, tell fashion to be more chaotic chaotic yeah like, for the... we need more I... chaos in fashion no no I we don't see. but <laughs> yes we do bring the chaos in I should not say that. I got death threats. But um, we don't need more chaos. We don't need more chaos. Um, but, like, again, like, when this stuff like this happens, like, you're like, fat, there's something going on in fashion. You know, people are speculating. It's always interesting. Yeah. 
I have no friends to talk fashion, so any conversation is a good. Oh, we'll be your friends. That's amazing. Aww. We we will uh, you know, be your your people exactly. to talk to fashion about. Exactly. And plus, we're matching today. You see, red and red. Come on. <laughs> Unintentional too. Uh, y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everybody, I am going to head out. Uh, this bed looks better than ever, but um, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow, probably. Now you know. Well. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Peace. everybody. Have a good night.